Welcome to the War Report. This is the show where we discuss the ongoing events of AEW and WWE NXT. This is Mo Kwan, um, hosting, you know, being the main host again. Cyrus is still out on duty, but he'll be back soon. I just got the text from him um, the other day. He said he's doing good, so that's good to hear. Um, this week, we got a real special guest. Uh, <laughs> You know, surprisingly, me, uh, me, and um, Justin have not done a pod together one one on one ever. Um, oh. So this is going to be very interesting, especially because this is going to be a very, very AEW heavy episode of the War Report this week. Um, it should be fun, but man, we got a like I already, you know, <laughs> I already ruined it by saying your name. But Justin's on this week. Uh, if you don't know Justin from the A Show, Black Print pod uh and the amp radio show which he just got off of so you know shout out to him for <laughs> we're doing this doing this for me you know the day before thanksgiving i really appreciate it here's uh my, what else here's my, thing. here's my thing people thought i couldn't do this shit i absolutely <laughs> do this shit because i do this shit that man okay? the man don't stop working um did i forget anything else i said whack print i said uh a show that's it. Those, are my, those that's are my two it. main those are my two main all right, ones, yeah. all right. you know <clears throat> well, <laughs> How you feeling, man? How how did everything go? How did the amp show go? I want I want to tap into one of the amp shows. It just you guys uh, do the show during AEW, so it's really really hard. Um, I tapped in for like thirty seconds, but then the show was on. I'm trying to let me tell you. Focus. Let me tell you right now. Let me tell you right now. It's possible because I did it tonight. <laughs> I don't. Yo, I don't know how you pull that off doing the show or doing the podcast and still being in the Discord active. I, I, I don't have the brain capacity to do all those things at once, like write notes down for the show and, I was, and try to like... I was, well, luckily, I got a really good memory. So NXT, I can remember it right off. I wrote no notes for this, like I would write for a show. So you getting the Jay-Z me off, the, off today. I'm off the top of the dome today. <laughs> no, and I just saw Dynamite. The only thing is, is like, you know, obviously in and out of breaks, I'm listening to the sounds, but I got closed captioning on. And even Josh was like, nigga, you're crazy. I was like, listen, this is how, I, this is how I gotta do it. I knew I had to come through. I had already put my name in the, in, you know, in the hat. And I was like, you know, I, I gotta come through for Quan, come through for Cyrus. Like I've never, I've never done a pod with you. So it was really important that I did this too. I think I've done one with nearly everyone, but you like, four reporters like our, I don't want to call it second, like, because you guys aren't, like, you know, second to us. But, like, this is, like, our other, you know what I'm saying, our other big show. You know what I mean? And I got to make sure that that we all got that chemistry, so. Should be interesting. You want to get into it? Yeah, let's go. We got, we got, a, lot, we got a lot to talk about. Um, So we'll Dude. get through the quick stuff real quick. Um, First, I want to give a shout out to AR Fox, who was officially signed with AEW, as well as um, Kaneska Takeshita. Takesh, like, damn, I said a damn name wrong. Kaneske oh, Let's call him Takeshita. Super. <laughs> soup um so yeah ar fox has been doing a lot of shows early um doing a lot of dark dark episodes recently with the taping i was at he was there he got a big ovation new england guy um Takeshita, he was there for a little while they gave him a weird run where like he was having competitive matches but losing all the time pretty much every tv match he had he lost i can look at the record but and then no, he's he's back. He came back with uh, Jun Akiyama over the weekend. They've had he had two matches with Eddie Kingston as well as um, Ortiz. So yeah, congrats to these two guys. Um, Ar Fox especially, I think. I mean, if you know anything about Ar Fox and what he had to go through, and you know the tribulations he's been through within his career, you know, it's, it's a blessing that he's even on you know on TV and getting a second chance to really, you know, really make a mark for his career and feed his family and everything. I think it's great. Yeah, he's an extremely talented guy. Um, w- was really confused why he never ended up anywhere before this. You know what I mean? And he just seemed like he was super well liked and everyone liked him. I, I know that he, you know, we could just right now. I'm not saying someone outed him. You know what I mean? Yeah. Against, against his will and and against his his wishes. And you know, at the time, people had a a view of shit like that. Now that's a lot different, obviously. But um, I, I think he's somewhere that that. Hopefully they they do something with him. You know what I mean. I think that it's joining that roster right now. You go you're you're going you're going up against a lot of shit. You know what I mean. It's it's a very heavy roster. They have very little TV time, and you have to do something to stand out. So I, I'm wondering what the plans are for both of these gentlemen as they go through AEW. But two, I mean, obviously everyone wanted them signed. You know what I mean. And and I think yeah. it's smart to sign them if WWE doesn't want them. But do something with them. That's the only thing. 
especially Takeshita. Um, AR Fox, I could see him possibly, you know, doing the trios with Top Flight again. Maybe they try to go for that after this this very very long um, seven seven match series yeah. that we'll we'll get into later. But um, yeah, congrats to them. Um, it's more AEW news. We got some more trailers and more footage for the AEW Fight Forever video game. I don't believe we we still don't have a release date. Is that correct? Have they announced anything? No, we don't. But um, carrying through the grapevine, it is imminent. Um, I would say yeah. Q1. Q1 is probably... You don't start dropping trailers like this at such a clip if the game is that far off. Let's just yeah. say that. Like, it's going to be out sooner than people think. Absolutely. Um, this is highly anticipated by a lot of people. Some people more than others. It's, you know, it's been called an ode to no mercy, which personally is my favorite wrestling game of all time. I know in the Discord, we had a whole little uh, debate about, is it, is it this, is it no mercy? Is it, uh, is it here comes the pain? Me personally, I never had the PlayStation 2, so I never really played here comes the pain like that. No mercy to me is the, the ultimate wrestling game. Um, I don't know about, I'm assuming you're the, you're a here comes the pain guy. I, honestly, <clears throat> a lot of those games haven't really like super aged well to me. So really, I'll be going off nostalgia. You know what I mean? I, I think yeah. that the way that these games have evolved, they're just so crazy. I think what No Mercy does well, there's some things that, you know, sh you know, Here Comes the Pain doesn't do well or vice versa. You know what I mean? Like as far as re best wrestling game, I go for what, what the presentation looked like. I, I really mm -hmm. love the presentation of the SmackDown versus Raw games, I think. Um, I think that first one, that second SmackDown versus Raw game was fucking classic to me. Like, I can't call it, but I will say yeah. that, like, No Mercy was was a moment in time. Like, I'm not going to argue if you say you like, you know, Here Comes the Pain. I'm not going to argue if you say you like No Mercy. I stayed out of that. I was, I was just like, okay, well, <laughs> there's no reason to argue. I'm staying out of it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. no matter what I say, people are going to have an opinion on, on, the, on the other end. But um, to go back to Fight Forever... That's another point where I see I see both sides of the situation. I know a lot of people are apprehensive about it. There is a lot of things in the game that they've shown that people should be apprehensive about. One of them, and, and the thing is, is that these are things that if any other company did it within the games industry, they would be getting rightfully kind of skepticism about the yeah. the missing release dates, um, the very little actual gameplay shown. You know what I mean? A, a lot of like things that, that we just haven't seen about the game. We haven't seen all the characters. What the, the, what 2K will do is that, and, and we all see this every year, they'll drop character. They do whole events around roster reveals. We haven't got that yet. You know what I mean? And yeah. is Punk in the game? He doesn't seem to be on the cover anymore. Um, is Cody in the game? It was, it was said that he was in the game as far as Q1 this year. But on the other wow, end... Okay. You, you have like the purists who love No Mercy. I don't think it plays just like No Mercy. From it doesn't I, seem like it. Yeah, for, even yeah. from the foot, it doesn't seem like it. Yeah, like there's a No Mercy does a little thing where they do this. And oh, it's like a strong grapple. <laughs> if it was doing that, I'm like, okay, well, you will see that in 2022, that don't fly no more. Like that yeah, just looks dumb. Work. Yeah, that doesn't work. So like, I, one thing I will say is that like, Ux is a developer that has a past and that past is the 2K games. And I think that it's interesting, the dichotomy of people who say, like, let's just be clear, like, Ukes, they're not the same Ukes that made that No Mercy game. So if you're thinking that that's going to be what it is, it's not going to be that. It's going to play like it, but it won't be that. Absolutely. Um, as for myself, the graphics, I'm a little like, I'm not like super duper graphics guy. I've never been that. But, ah, it, yo, in low key, in my bug, it kind of looks like a mobile game. It looks a little. It looks a little rough. It, <clears throat> I think. It, I think that goes to the fact that it's 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 largely independent, other than THQ distributing yeah. the game. Um, AEW is doing this out of pocket. Now on the AEW side, video game development is really fucking hard. <laughs> you know absolutely, what I mean? Like, absolutely. I see it every every week, every day with my coworkers and people that I see that work on games every day. It is a constant creative process that does not stop until that game's out the door. You know what I mean? And for a wrestling game that's under so much scrutiny, if they don't if they don't get this right, it's gonna be it's gonna look bad on Ukes, and it's gonna look worse for AEW for paying upwards of what I hear from Tony himself fifty million dollars on this. Does this Man. look like 50, <laughs> does this look like like fifty million dollars can get you a lot, but you got to create an engine that costs a lot of money. You got to create a graphics engine that costs a lot of money. 
50 million dollars and it doesn't look like it has both of those things i i think that'd be cause for concern for a lot of people too a lot of concern we, we gonna see hopefully you know we hear a release date within you know the coming weeks if they're doing trailers like you said um they did release a, a kind of a, a major like a big trailer showing more footage than we've seen before uh i think believe today they released a um a John Moxley centered trailer with kind of interspliced with like real life footage with the game. It was, it was an interesting dynamic. I, I'll say this much. The, the Moxley trailer has been the best trailer I've seen so far as, as far as making the game look, you know, good. I, $60. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, we'll the, see. There, there, was game, there was a game pass rumor that I was kind of like iffy about. <clears throat> and yeah. actually the actual games account came out and, um, debunked it and I was like yeah if it was on Game Pass that would be something that they would announce close to a release date number one there's no yeah. release for it Game Pass games they're done and their release date comes with that or or a partnership with Xbox so I could see it if it was going to be exclusive to Xbox my thing is this AEW is not getting 60 million dollars for that game to be on Game Pass Microsoft is not giving them that much money it has to make money they're selling it at 60 dollars it's going to be on every system, Quan, every single system, PS4, PS5, Xbox Series, Xbox One, <laughs> Xbox One X, the Switch, and it got to run well on all those systems. That's the one thing that I think no one's talking about is that it's yeah. going to be on every single system and it has to be optimized for that. And people are already mad at games like God of War and, and stuff that have started as PS4 games and moved on to PS5 games. People say, well, why the fuck did they do that? I was like, because development is hard and not a lot of people get PS5s. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. They got an uphill battle. <laughs> I can't call it on, on, on Fight Forever right now. It should be interesting. I'm, I'm interested to see, you know, the, the coming weeks where, we, where we're going with this and we get more footage. I, I want to see some real gameplay footage outside of, you know, the stuff we saw at the game show a couple months ago out in Japan. I, I want to see the real meat and potatoes of this. But, you know, going it's forward very, it's very like careful <laughs> what they're showing you right now very very careful yeah. <laughs> um speaking of very careful well, i guess not so careful um brian danielson discusses his uh championship aspirations um or lack thereof or lack thereof um <laughs> i forgot i don't have the actual word what show was on but um a quote you just like the most joy for me is um he doesn't need to be the champion, he said. Um, and I quote, being able to get in the ring with the younger talent or, or being able to give back, that's the stuff that brings value to my life. Especially now as an older wrestler, I don't need the spotlight, nor do I want the spotlight. I love AEW Dark and AEW Dark Evolution. I would love to just be on those shows. I would love to do that. Tony Khan pays me too much to do that. He wants me to be on TV, obviously. And I would just be as happy, probably more happy, because I love to wrestle. All right, you know, we get the gist of it. He doesn't really care about holding the championship. Um, I will say, in a situation like this, Brian is consistent. He was also like this when he was in WWE. I remember a quote about him wanting to be, you know, holding just the IC title on being like the SmackDown champion years back when before the draft happened and all that stuff. So this is on brand. But yeah, he said it himself. Um, Tony Khan, that's not putting you on, Dark Dog. You're going to be on TV every week wrestling wrestling um as far I feel, as his I feel direction like saying that, I, I feel like saying that is also kind of disrespectful um for a lot of reasons i think that he's somebody that we already know you're not what like brian you're not one of the guys you're not one of the boys like at least in the sense of like money wise you're not you're not where starks is you're not where ethan page is you're not one of those guys they pay you a lot of money Hell yeah, you're gonna have to be a champion at one point. He can't say no forever. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, I feel like <clears throat> we kind of knew that he was kind of the guy that wasn't pushing to be on top because a lot of responsibility comes with that. And that seems to be that seems to be something that he's not particularly interested in, which we always kind of felt. But I feel like to say that out loud is kind of like, all right, you're trying to be like too kind of, you know what I'm saying, grassroots. If I was a nigga in the locker room, I'd be like, okay, nigga, then let me let me take your spot every week. If I'm um if I'm Andrade or Miro or somebody like you know what I'm saying it's like well let me let me get the, the spot you let me get in Blackpool Combat Club let me get the, the remix music that they be giving you all the time let me get let me get all of that then and you can go you could do what I'm doing every week which is nothing you know what I'm saying I just thought that it was kind of weird that he said that yeah um 
Yo, Brian's a different dude, man. I don't, <laughs> even say it's a weird, interesting thing. I don't want to say weird, but just some real interesting stuff that I don't know, he's just a different cat, man, for real. But um, yeah, I I'm more concerned about creatively where we go with Brian from here. He's lost every championship match he's been in. I think he's been in like five this year. And how many more times can we keep putting him in this position to lose? You know, yeah. the title match. <clears throat> yeah. Is it, 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 the fans already, which which like, I feel like tonight, and we'll talk about this on Dynamite, I feel like tonight was a very rare moment where the fans actually gave a fuck about what was going on with him and what he was doing. But again, he's, he's third wheel, fourth wheel to another program that he's not even really in. <laughs> yeah. I just... They need to figure something out with it. I don't. I don't know what. I, low key, I kind of wish they would have just gave him the Ring of Honor World Title at the pay per view. Yeah, it seems, it seems like we're we're rolling headfirst into <laughs> what I figured is going to be was happening in final battle, and that's a looks to be like Garcia Jericho. I don't know how they get there, but like that seems to be the only guy that could convincingly pull up on him. Well, it seems like. It, well, I don't know if you caught it at the end of the show. I don't know if you were wrapping up on Amp, but uh, Claudio. Uh, pulled oh, up yeah. on Jericho after the match and smacked him in the yeah. face. So it might be Claudio Jericho again. Yeah, I guess <laughs> again. <laughs> I guess. It, it, uh, yeah, this seems reactionary, but we'll get to it when we, when we watch Diamond or we talk about Diamond. Uh, before we get into full gear review, um, you know, it's, it's the night before Thanksgiving. Me and you were doing a show. I could have been outside. You know, I mean, it's, this is one of the biggest party nights of the year. But I'm here <laughs> recording the show. I know I'm you got you. Are you here too? You just got off of work. You cooking dinner? I know. It's, I saw your Instagram. So, um, <laughs> you know, I just want to briefly ask you, like, we're in the we're in the season. This is the spirit. Like, what do you what are you thankful for as far as you know, professionally, personally, like, a show stuff, work stuff. Like, what what's, what do you what what are you what are you most thankful for in 2022? I want to say thankful for my health, but fuck, look at listen to me tonight. Uh, I think I'm I'm, I'm really really thankful for. It having a sense of my place in the world this year like i've been able to really go to some really cool places and do some cool things and really see it resonate with people and and it really connect with people. i think i think connection is the biggest thing is like we went to wrestlemania in dallas and i saw a lot of people for the first time i never met and people that told me you know what i'm saying how how great it was to meet me and how great it was to, to be around all of us and i got to link my friends that I had from the internet with my friends that I've known in real life all my life. You know what I mean? Like that was the first yeah. time that had ever happened. So like, I'm super thankful for that. Obviously thankful for my wife and she, she's amazing. She's in the other room, knocked the fuck out. Didn't even know she was asleep, but she just got back from Saudi. So like fresh off, fresh off the jet, fresh off the fucking jet. But you know, <laughs> I'm thankful for her for, you know what I'm saying? Like giving me the opportunity to, to, to marry her. You know what I'm saying? Like that, that was such a big, big thing for for me personally in my life you know what i mean and it changed changed my whole life clearly but i think just professionally and creatively i've just really been noticing my purpose this year that's awesome that's beautiful me personally <clears throat> i'm thankful for just um man i'm with you on that family my daughter um she's growing to be such a young woman like i'm just so happy for her and just how she, yeah. well she's doing in school and just like Man, it's crazy just being a parent. Like she's about to be thirteen next month. Like I can't even believe she's gonna be like a teenager. Like that's just blowing my mind. To like, it's really gonna hit me on her birthday in a couple weeks. But like, man, what? And then you know, just like everybody, I'm happy. All my family's in good health. I just saw my mom and dad. They just moved. They just moved to a new house. So they downsized from where they were at before because everybody moved out. So they got a new little place they got it going on. So I gotta help them move. Um, man, yeah, it just. I'm, I'm thankful for, you know, being on the being on the EA Show Network for you know it's been over damn 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 near been two years almost I th I think it'll be in February two years, so that's amazing. Yeah, I'm just thankful for the A Show and just, um, uh, man, and, and people who follow, the, the, you know the, the the other half of uh, wrestling Twitter that hasn't blocked me yet that still follow me and still fuck with me and still want to hear my opinions on things. Still Welcome. blows my mind. Still blows my mind to the day people care about what I think about a wrestling show. But you know, people listen to us. I think that's beautiful. I think it's so cool, man. Um, okay, we got breaking I, news. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. What you're thinking. Go ahead, go, no, go ahead. What's the breaking I wanna, news? I want to say that we're thankful for you for putting up with Cyrus every week. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the breaking news is the final battle. Uh, the the final battle main event was announced. Is it what we think it is? 
It's exactly what we just said it okay, is. It's, okay. it's Jericho. It's Jericho versus Claudio with stipulation that should Claudio lose, he has to join the Jericho Appreciation Society. Oh, brother. <sighs> Defund Jericho. Defund Chris Jericho. Please. That's how you know he got the book, too. Yep. That is ding, that, that, ding, fucking ding. That is how you know he's got the book. Because the thing about it is, Quan, he's going to win that match. Yep, and they're gonna have this stupid Claudio and Jay. Like, when no one's gonna care because nobody cares about like ROH. Claudio, Claudio, or ROH, or really Jericho. Yeah. You know, or the Jericho Association at this point, they're all kind of obsolete. I mean, exactly. Daniel Garcia, and, Daniel Garcia and, has been like, non fucking like factor on the show for like the last month. And, I and I think that I think that even bigger than that is the fact that like this is how they're gonna soft break up the uh, the Combat Club. Yeah. Cause it's like, 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 does 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 Cesaro have a a a, a membership card for? He could have, he could have gone to Jericho Appreciation Society anytime he wanted to. Does he pay yeah. dues to be in the Blackpool Combat Club? Do they fucking have a team meeting every week? <laughs> Low key. <laughs> I don't it know. doesn't seem like it. He hasn't been around Moxley in weeks. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. Weird. Yeah, but that's your man. Do you do we know where's final battle at? I don't battle. I don't know. Let me, look, let me look it up real quick. I believe it's, I want to see like in the West Coast. Also, they announced um, Revolution will be in San Francisco this year. So at the, at the, where uh, the Warriors play at. So at the, whoa, whoa where the, at Chase? Yeah, Chase. They got money for Chase? They got Chase money. <laughs> I wonder if they're going to pack that out. <laughs> that was like, these niggas got to go to the Cow Palace. Yeah. That is a big move for them. Chase is a is a huge, a huge arena. It's the biggest arena that they've, they'll, they've ever done. Other than like, how big is the forum? I don't think the forums, the, the forum for sure isn't as, as up to date. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, it's, not, it's not up to date. Like, like uh, the Chase is, hell no. Yeah, the Chase can... Hold on, let me let's, let me let me check the numbers on this. Let me check yeah. the numbers on this. Chase Arena. There's no way these niggas is doing. Oh yeah, it was confirmed. Oh, it was for Okay, it was public. Um, they're spending a lot of money for that Quan. Let me just tell you, that's not cheap. That's not. It's 18k. It's say 18. That's for basketball. 18k. So they probably 18, what another another 18, probably like 2500 on top of that. So they're not doing. They're not. They're. It's gonna be heavily tarped. Yeah, I don't think they're gonna do. 20k i think eight 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 mm-hmm. okay eight k seat that'll okay. be the smallest thing they've they've, they've they've done maybe they did a dog show in there before it's probably smaller but <laughs> i thought these niggas were going to the cow palace okay good for them yeah they, they are doing the cow palace i don't exactly know when it must be probably around that same time yeah because um. cow palace is straight ass i thought that was where, that was going to be where they did it at. <laughs> cow palace is straight ass <laughs> Okay. Well, okay. So the forum, the LA forum is 18 for, for music concerts. Yeah. If we're to go off of that. They filled the forum up. But it wasn't, it wasn't capacity though. It wasn't 18. I don't know how much it was. You're probably right. It wasn't 18. Um, you know, these seats. Um, it was in, it was in, uh, it was in June. Yeah. It was right. It was right after our, um, right after, uh, Forbidden Door. I don't know. Oh, Russell Chicks. There we go. They did twelve. They, they did 12. twelve. Okay. They didn't do the whole. No they They'll do ten. I'll give them ten. They'll do ten. Yeah, they're probably they're a lot less popular than they were in June. Yeah, they'll do ten. Yeah. All right. Let's get into um this full gear review. Car real quick. Full rear. <laughs> full rear. I was waiting for. I've been saying it all week. Sorry. <laughs> all right. Yeah. So right. Look. <laughs> Uh, show opens up with Luchasaurus versus Jungle Boy. I missed the first half of this match because I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I was looking for a stream on <laughs> online. It was a little tough to find one. For the Here's, first my half of the match. Here's my thing. Next time, what what we should think of something to do for like the patrons for that with 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 with, with um I, I'm Elon Musk in it right now because I don't know if it's possible, but <laughs> maybe there's a way we could <clears throat> we could have a we could have a stream and we could we could all watch it so we don't got to worry about that no more. I was looking at that on on the on um on Saturday too. Yeah. A well, wait, wait, is it on Fight TV? Yeah, I believe so. We pay for Fight TV, nigga. We could just watch it on that. No one told me this. 
Jesus I've Christ. I've been, fighting, I've been fighting for streams every every other month. <laughs> I think no one was thinking of that. If it's on Fight TV, <laughs> you have an account. What the fuck I'm is Fight TV? Yeah, if you if we have fight, we have Fight TV. There's, there should be a way that we could do this. All right. We'll briefly go through these. Um Lucha Storage versus Jungle Boy. Uh there was a, there was a, right, how do you feel about it? there was a there was a, a very much a discourse on the Discord about AEW style of cage matches where it's only pin or submission you can, like the escaping the cage means nothing mm. are you with are you with that i would because i'm gonna i'm on the side of like i don't really care for escape the cage to win <clears> i prefer <throat> um you know pinfall or submission however and then the argument was like well then the cage the whole point of the cage is to keep them inside but like you can make that same argument for hell in a cell and people leave leave hell in a cell every other match so it's like hell in a cell i'm not mad at it hell in a cell is in the one it, like the cage match is the one thing WWE hasn't bastardized and overdone to a point where they had to do gimmicks like that to keep the match going remember like they didn't ever do WWE cage match pay-per-view you know what I'm saying the reason that yeah. they had to do that in hell in a cell and I and I and I'll raise you this they actually have stopped going outside of the cage in the most recent hell in the cells like yeah it's been a while uh, yeah Bianca hasn't didn't do it in hers um Roman didn't do it against Ray um, they haven't done it in quite some time. I, I will give them that. They they haven't done that bullshit. So, like, I, I get what they're saying, but, like, it, you still can't fight the fact that Hell in a Cell is just a, a bigger cage match. You know what I mean? Like, it has to be some real life-ending shit that makes you want to do it. And I think a lot of what Hell in a Cell has to do is that it has to live up to those fucking bumps from Mick Foley. And that's why they go outside the ring is because they're always trying to top themselves. You got to put a hat on top of a hat. Now, where I landed on the cage match is that it's one of the few... Kind of traditional matches we got left in the you know in yeah. in in wrestling i don't mind what AEW does because they have to put a spin on it wwe always does escape or you know what i'm saying if AEW really wanted to flip it they could do it but make it a special type of match that only they do for cage yeah. matches where you could only escape or whatever and that would be a really cool twist on it i think for the purposes of something like this match since they don't do hell in a cell it worked for this blood feud, so to speak, yeah. where he he had to do it that way. And it had to be, you know, pin of submission. But with WWE, so often it does kind of fall within what they do storyline wise, where you don't want what well, shit Drew McIntyre, Karen Cross had one other week. And Scarlett still got to make through, you know what I'm saying? Like, so it's yeah. like they, everyone, everyone bastardizes it in a, in a different way, depending on who's the booker and producer. I don't really land too far left or right on on either on either side. I just want a good match. You know what I'm saying? It just has to make sense to me. Yeah. I will say for what I did see in this match, it was pretty good uh for these two guys, I think. Dino Dude. Yeah. Shout out to <laughs> Jim Cornette. <laughs> I just I gotta shout my man's out on the show. <laughs> oh no, I forget y'all 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 uh y'all on the camp Cornette. But uh, hold on, all right, let's just get this out the way. Right camp now. Cornette. Let's get this out of the way right now. Go ahead. The reason why I watch and listen to Jim Cornette is because as idiotic as he will get, he's the, he's the weirdest liberal I've ever heard in my life. Weird. He's a liberal guy from Kentucky who hates women's wrestling <laughs> and, and all manner of, of progressive things, but hates Donald Trump, hates QAnon, hates Republicans, <laughs> like with, with to his core, hates that type of shit. It's the craziest thing. It's so, so weird. It's the weirdest thing ever because you would think that he would land on a certain on a certain thing. That's why I think a lot of what he does is pageantry. You got to remember, this is one of the best minds in the in the business as far as booking of all time. So I listen to a show when he goes into his Rain Man booking mode where he says, "This is how I would have did it." Break it down. He actually does moments where they ask him or Brian Last asks him, "What were you thinking when you booked this thing or or when you booked it?" You know what I'm saying? This and he walks you through it and he says, "This is why they do it wrong in modern day wrestling." Because this is why it worked then, and they've they've lost the plot on this. It's like I get it. He's a lot different from some of the other boomers that I would completely tune out. Because I think creatively, he's a genius. I think like, he's like really a, smart, like a Jim Ross. Exactly. Cause like, cause like when Jim Ross does, it's like complaining. It's like a real whiny. Like, oh, back in my day, we wouldn't do this. What is exactly. this about? And then exactly like. And the other thing is, Jim Ross isn't funny. So Cornette's exactly. funny. Cornette's, Cornette's kind of funny. funny. He kind of yeah. funny. I'll give it to him. I'll Cornette's, give it to him. Cornette's funny as fuck. So like, even when it's something you don't agree with, calling her Jane Cargill, like, like he doesn't drop the bit ever. He does ever. not drop the bit. So like, you got to respect it. And in, in some way, I know, like, I think people know that he's in on the joke. And when I started yeah. listening for a while, I was like, he's definitely in on the joke. 
He knows what people are coming and listen to. I don't want to call him Howard Stern or like Star and Buck Wild, but like he's one of those type of shock jock type of guys. You he, know, he's yeah. looking for shock for sure. Yeah, I, exactly. I catch him every once in a while. If it's something I really want to hear from him about, I'll listen to it. <laughs> um, but I, you know, I, you guys post all the clips in the, in the Discord all the time. I just think it's funny. Um, <laughs> next matchup, uh, the Elite make their triumphant return against Death Triangle for the AEW Trios Championship. I think. I, I don't. <laughs> I don't want to blow my load here on what I think about their arc so far. We can, we, can, we want to do it all at once with, with Dynamite. I yeah, think that would make a, I think that would make a lot more sense if we kind of tie it in. If, yeah. We could tie it in with Dynamite because I feel like I feel like you got to in order to talk about that we got to talk about what they just did tonight. Yeah, that's fine. And and I just I just feel like it's I don't know how you feel about it, but I, I feel like it's, it's definitely some of the most. Let me preface this. I am not a CM Punk fan. Yeah. I'm not a CM Punk fan at all. I used to be. I'm not right now. This is crazy. <laughs> like what you we're seeing, like the, right? Like this is crazy what they're doing right now on TV. They're playing in his face. It, they almost make me feel bad for the guy. Like I almost, I almost like want to. I almost want to side with Punk at this point, even though I was like, it, it, I gotta get. It's one of those situations, you know, like that, that meme. There's a meme on Twitter where they're like, you know, this is one of those situations where you absolutely do not have to hand it to the guy. Like, no. I have to hand it, I have to hand it to Punk right here because yeah. this is crazy. Like, let's just walk, let's break it down. They do this really dramatic tease for the past three weeks, which we saw. And I was like, okay, if you want to have some grace about the situation and you want to be adults about it and you don't want to prove him right, you just come back. You just come back. Yeah. They thank you, do your matches. You don't say shit about it, right? They don't do that at all. They come out the wayward sun. They make this really dramatic tears, falling. We're the returning heroes. And then you think about it, right, Quan? You say, wait a minute. It was the rumor that you guys spread a rumor so fierce that it pushed out one of the biggest stars that your company has ever had. Yeah. I don't think, I'm starting to think now, Punk ain't that crazy for what he was saying on that scrum the night we was watching it and we was like, this nigga's crazy. <laughs> now I'm like, yo, he might have been on to something. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll be, I'll, I'm going to be like, be real with you. I never disagree with anything Punk was saying. I think the okay. Punk Abandon stuff was kind of like, okay, where is this coming from? Yeah. But as far as the I work with children, they're spreading rumors about me. I was like, yeah, I believe that. I just thought he was wilding for doing that at that time when he yeah. just won a world championship. But yeah. as far as but as far as you know, this this I I I've, I've been saying the elite have been in the wrong this whole time. I think they they he called them out, which to me was a test to see if they were the children that he said they were. Yep. Because if they were what he if they were not what he said they were, they wouldn't have busted in that door. And I think he was waiting to be proven right by them yeah. doing that. Because the hit dog will always holler. So they came in, they got the shit beat out of them. All three of them All three of got them. beat up by two niggas. These are buff niggas. None of them had a scratch on them. Punk was already injured before the fight happened. Yeah. So you got beat by a one-armed dude, <laughs> an old nigga. That was an AC like 50 years old. Who bit your ass. <laughs> How does the elite come out as victims here when they started it? I want to know how. Y'all are not the victims, my nigga. This is the this is crazy. They come out, they have the match. The matches. The, here's my thing, Juan. The matches are secondary to whatever they do now. Especially tonight. Especially tonight. The matches are secondary to everything because the only thing people were talking about on on Saturday was the entrance. Was mm -hmm. all was the fuck CM Punk chance. Which came from, it, and this has been kind of talked about. This was an area that was never high on him to begin with, so they were always going to get that reaction. But you think the Bucks knew that, right? That's why they did it. Yeah. These niggas are not dumb. They're not stupid at all. So we get to tonight on Dynamite. They Wait, come before, out before before we even get to that. Okay. I want to get to the. I want to get to the. Um, so they have the match. Death Triangle wins the match, and then two hours later into the show. Out of nowhere, 
it's announced that this is a best of seven series for the for the trio championship. Huh? <laughs> My confusion with this is this. And there's more confusing title shit on Dynamite tonight. We're going to get to yeah. that too. Yeah. We, I got a lot to say about this. Because <laughs> you made me watch it. So now you're going to get everything. <laughs> you have the match. It is a title match, Quan. It is advertised as a title match. And you turn around and said, no, nah, I really wasn't. They just won the first match of it. Yeah. So if the Elite wins one of the matches, do they get the titles and they, swip, they switch and swatch? Is there a situation where the last person that wins, wins the titles. And like, 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 how does it work? Because they won again tonight. Yeah, so it's 2-0. They're going to do the 3-1 thing. They're, they're totally going to do the 3-1 thing, aren't they? they they're going to blow the 3-1 thing. I would, quit, the I would quit the company. I would quit the company. I would quit. No, it's got to go to, yeah, it's got to go to seven. I would quit the company. I would quit. I'd say, I'm done. This was my final, this was my final match for this company. You guys have made us look like fucking idiots. So before the show tonight, Kenny Omega had an interview and he said, this isn't elite versus CM Punk. No, not at all. I just want the fans to just move on, move on from it. During this match, which is uh, had a lot of shit happen that I don't remember. And I won't remember next week. He 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 bit <laughs> Quan. Quan. <laughs> he bit Pac's arm. <laughs> he bit Pac's arm. And then he tried to give Pac to go to sleep. No, he did get Pac to go to sleep. I mean, yeah, not try. He, he gave Pac. I'm, I'm talking about the buckshot lariat shit. I, I'm oh making, yeah, he, yeah, he they, did that too. They tried to do that. They did the buckshot botch. This ain't cute video game shit like this is real life shit you got your ass beat for being cute like this they did they not to me just prove everything that punk they, said that they were doing they, was right they proved every single thing he said they said he were he working with children they acted like children tonight they um first first of all i don't know why people believe that kenny quote in the first place as soon as i saw that quote i knew that was bullshit i said first of all Kenny and the Bucks are the two, three of the most pettiest people in wrestling history ever. I like, there's no way they're letting this go in Chicago. You're out of your fucking mind if you think this is oh. going to be the, in the end of it. Chicago, here's my thing. You could, someone, someone I saw, they're, they're playing up. They're being heels to the crowd. They fucking weren't. They were not being heels to the crowd. They played it completely. They played it completely straight faced. They were not heels tonight. They were, the, they were themselves. They were not heels. The crowd gave them every fucking thing they had. They hated them tonight. And then you know what's going to happen? They're going to hate them every fucking time. They go there twice a month. They're going to hate them every time they go to that suburb in Chicago. Every <laughs> fucking time they go to that suburb. Yep. So they do all that shit. They still end up losing. I'm, I'm guessing this is the big... I thought on Saturday it was the baby face the boys and be like, okay, sorry. This ain't an apology. This is just story. This is storytelling. Is there any... Is there any to, in your opinion, is there any situation right now where if you're CM Punk and you see this happening, you know what's happening because he's been making his own jokes about it too. Yeah. That you don't say, you know what? If you want to fuck with me, I'm gonna, I'm I'm gonna, I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make somebody else money. Is there, is there any situation where he goes through that and people who were kind of down on him and against him are kind of like, I get it. Go ahead, do your thing. Go to Saudi Arabia. Fuck it. I'm gonna, yo, at this point, that that's the all right. That's the gift of LeBron where he's like. He really zoned in. He he does a little nod, like yeah, I right, bet. This is that's what yeah. that was at this point. It's like you know you know what I hate this compare. I hate to even make this comparison. You remember um, uh, you know like the White House had does a little fucking um the little like the, the dinner where they had the comedian roast everybody. Yeah, the Donald Trump it, shit. It's the Donald. It's this literally the Donald Trump moment where he was sitting there pissed off. I guarantee yeah. I'll pump in his living room like yeah, you know what? I'm about to make that call real quick. Let's see what's going on. He know, and the thing is, is that. The <clears throat> the air of jealousy, the air of, of inferiority that went through them. Yep. They begged this man to come to the company. They begged him to come. Literally, they, they said it themselves. They said, yeah, we begged this guy to come. Please come to us. Please come help us. And this is how you're treating him? He actually made the company some money last year. He got them some, some big gates just by showing up. Y'all wasn't yeah. doing that. I'm just calling this. I hate. I, there is nothing more in my fucking every fiber of my being <laughs> that hates having this do this right now. Advocate for this dickhead, but I have to. 
tonight was crazy. It was some of the most disgusting shit I've ever seen. Like, I would have rather, it, it, and, and this is my question too. At this point, what's what's the worst breakup that Punk's had? WWE or this? I still want to say WWE because it was like lawsuits involved, but apparently there was lawsuits involved. We ain't seen yeah, it. That, that, that's the other thing. I'm just gonna say that I don't even. It might have been lawsuits involved in this. I don't know, but um, I'm still gonna say WWE for now. But I mean, we'll see how, how far this goes uh, going forward. But this is very messy. This is famous yeah. last words, y'all. Y'all hear this? Famous <laughs> last words. Famous last <laughs> words. <laughs> if one of them niggas gets down on, on Indian style, <laughs> what you saying then? I don't even know, man. Uh, he did the GTS. But no, 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 hold on, Kwan. You just said that he did the GTS, the GTS and the nigga kicked out of it. And the nigga he kicked out of it. it. <laughs> if I'm Pac and I agree to that, you're complicit too. That was corny. Yeah. He put you niggas over. <clears throat> like, listen, he put these niggas over. He jumped in shit that he didn't even have to jump into last summer. He was yeah, talking man. about Sasha shit. He was talking about the Brock shit. He said, see, that's why y'all niggas. He said, Bray, come over. Bray, come on. Come to the company. Yeah. Sasha, come to the company, bro. I'm over here. I'll treat you right. You mean to tell me that this ain't, he ain't never advocate for WWE like he advocated for these niggas and they doing him like this. It's crazy. And we could talk about the wedding shit all we want to. Yeah, wedding day shit that happened. They have lowered this man's stock to literally non-existent. It's non-existent, Quan. He is the lowest commodity in wrestling right now because they took his they took the diehard core fans that came to AEW for him and they turned them against him, bro. Yeah. That shit's crazy. That shit is crazy. It's cult shit. A CM Punk I'll- fan don't hit the same no more. It doesn't. And that's, that's, that's what I, that's where I just like that us versus them mentality. They, it's from, really about it, it can it can make you or break you. We saw we yeah. seen it in action. I, someone posted a clip of like literally a year ago, the crowd chanting CM Punk, and then like the a year later, or uh, last night or the other night, it's yeah. uh fuck CM Punk like this. Like it was just, within 365 days. I like how did this even happen? How did we get here? Why wow, I can't wait for uh, wrestling bios to cover this in like five years or something. No, he can do it in a year. He been he been. He gonna do you know it talking about wrestling bios that is annoying me with this nigga right now. He doing up to date shit. I don't like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he did. The, he did the Batista. He did the Batista run. Yeah. I, I, I listened to the first five minutes. He said the WWE's instant. Uh, they they don't they don't see the good that's in front of them or some shit. I said let me cut this shit off. I, yeah. the, you know yeah. why I didn't like that? Because I hear it all the time. Yeah. And like, I'm automatically not gonna watch that because. How many times have we heard people say that? But how many times have we heard the Batista story? Like, we know he was supposed to win WrestleMania. And my thing with that was also that, like, yes, it sucked, but their plans were hard locked. Because you know what? You know why else they probably didn't go to Brian that quick? The graphics were done. <laughs> A lot of the promo <laughs> was done. <laughs> they had it all done. They had, they, had all, they had all six months ready to go. They had the exactly. whole program, the SummerSlam going. Exactly. So it's like on one end, you don't like the last minute booking, but on the other end, when they actually did book ahead and they knew Batista was coming back months ahead, y'all hated that. And they were like, fuck, we're really not trying to go to Brian because like, that's not our story right now. (laughs) But these niggas forced our hand. You know what I'm saying? So I heard that shit. I was like, the the one thing I did like was his his, uh, crown jewel, Brothers of Destruction versus DX thing. That was actually pretty funny. I haven't seen that. You know, I've never seen that match before. Don't. Just watch the wrestling bios. (laughs) He, He actually breaks it down. Uh, spot by spot. It's actually pretty good. Does he? Okay. Yeah. Uh, anyway, let's get back into um where we are. I keep wanting to call it revolution. Full gear. Um Nyla Rose uh versus Jade Cargill. I'll say um this is I'm this going is off fine. of you right now. I didn't watch it. I'm you going off this one. This I'm not arguing. Fine. Um <laughs> There were some weird spots, like when Nyla did the drape over the top rope, and like because just like Jade was too tall, and like it looked weird. But it was a, it was a fine match, no crazy botch, nothing like that. Um, it was weird that they had a Nyla Rose come out in the Eddie Guerrero lowrider for some reason. I, I don't know. I mean, I guess. Um, don't do I special was, inter- don't do special entrances for special entrances' sake. If you don't need a special entrance, don't give don't get one. Yeah, it was, that was so so random. I, I guess and, um, Vicky had the I'm your mommy shirt on. I felt like a little, low key, a little bit of a shot at Rhea, low key, or like WWE in general. Like, yo, why are you doing that? But the place said, "Bitch, we own it." <laughs> That's how we right? can do it. <laughs> uh, 
Next up, which I thought was the match of the night, um, the ROH title fatal four-way between Claudio, Brian Danielson, Sammy Guevara, and Chris Jericho. Um, it was a match. Yeah. It was a match. Was I a thought match. it was... I thought Sammy took a lot of the beating, which you know, which I figured they put him in the match for that. Yeah. You, you got Brian and Claudio. They're going to do their thing. Jericho... I, me personally, I think Jericho in ring wise, not talking about creative stuff, any other bullshit he be doing on the show. I think in ring, this is one of his best years in a long time. Yeah, and I thought this was a pretty good match as well. Um, outside, I couldn't tell you anything that, that happened in it. <laughs> <laughs> I, feel like that's, that happened. I feel like that's that's a lot of the show though. I feel like 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 at the end of the show, you just felt like. I feel like AEW pay per view just to make people say, okay, this is better than X7. This is better than WrestleMania 21. It's better than now people are saying it's a good show. I feel like the expectations have gone back down to ground level where I can be like, okay, I can accept you guys saying it was just a good show. Yeah, that's how I feel about this whole show in general. It's like, this is cool. It wasn't, there was nothing like egregiously bad about it. Yeah. Except maybe the next match, which is uh, Soraya versus <laughs> Dr. Britt Baker, DMD. Um, there were some reservations with this match, I think, from a lot of people fans you know certain quotes we heard from Soraya saying she wasn't all 100 percent comfortable which is understandable but like i talked to armand about last week like in a, in a profession like professional wrestling you got to be comfortable because it's not just you it's you know it's your opponent they have to work around whatever you can't handle it can become you know something that could be dangerous thankfully in this match it wasn't um everything seemed to go fine i didn't like how they started the match off with Soraya like selling her neck like she was hurt I thought yeah. that was kind of it. Kind of killed the crowd a little bit. I ain't gonna lie. Um, but besides that, match was fine. I think Soraya winning was the right decision. Um, she wasn't on the show this week, so I don't. I don't even know where, where they go. With this. <laughs> I said the same thing. It felt like it was like, all right, there's your one match a month. See you in a month. Like that. Yeah. that felt like that's really what it was. Like, I I looked at clips and, and saw some things from the match. I feel like I feel like Sarai is still moving in molasses out there, and I feel like she was moving like that when she came back the first time. Yeah. And I, I think it's another instance, Quan, where I think women have passed her by again, where the pace is just so much faster. And I would you would imagine that like Britt, who already moves like a goddamn a Cadillac from 1975, <laughs> she's still moving faster than Soraya. So maybe she's a Model T. <laughs> yeah. Um. For, for our first match back in five years, it was cool. It was cool. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna shit on it or anything like that. Um, next up, triple threat match: Powerhouse Hobbs versus Samoa Joe versus Wardlow for the AEW TNT Championship. Samoa Joe wins. <laughs> I I don't know why, um, but now he's a double champion. He's the Ring of Honor TV champion and the AEW TV champion. Unless they're like unifying these belts, but even then, I still don't understand why you wouldn't have Wardlow win this. Um, they the, have, match was, the match was what it was. but They have completely... Wh- I don't want to hear new Batista ever again for this guy. Man. That's a lie. It's a lie. He's not the new Batista. He is the he is the, the first Wardlow. And they are... They could potentially be, like, kind of fucking him right now with, with, the, with the way they're booking him. This whole TNT title reign has just been... It's been Over really it's, it's really weird. I, I think... He'd been cursed ever since the MJF incident happened where, you know, MJF walked out, which was supposed to be his big moment, and it became the MJF's big moment. Yep. And then the first feud out, he has a he's having a feud with Mark Sterling and his bodyguards. It's just like for like two months. It was never any real consistent storyline until recently with Samoa Joe, you know, which they become a tag team. We all saw it coming that they were going to split up and they were going to have the match, and they threw Hobbs in there for some reason. Uh, he wasn't even in the deciding factor of the pin, I don't believe, so <laughs> he was just in the match just to be in the match. It, this match, I I feel like they really let the war, war load down. They had so much momentum going in the war. They spent, like, I, I talk to Cyrus about this all the time. They spent two years building this guy up to this point. Two years from, like, the first episode. And threw the notepad up in the air and said, we're done. <laughs> yeah. And... It, that's the problem with so much of TK booking <clears throat> is that it feels like when he gets to the end of his short story, he does. There's no sequel. There's no. There's no continuing yeah. on. And wrestling is 52 weeks a year. You have to yeah, continuously go. And if you have nothing to do with the guy, swap him out. Give give him somebody else. Give him a break a little bit. Or 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 I don't know. Move him up. But yeah. 
he's so stuck and now he has to actually rewrite his whole world championship playbook multiple times over that he don't know what to do and if, because warlow didn't fit into that he fit into the tnt championship then he doesn't know what to do yeah as far as joe goes um i don't know where joe do, do they do joe wardlow again that winter is coming I guess, but I just don't see like Samoa Joe really working that much longer, you know, at this kind of pace. I wish he would stop. Me too. I I, I wish he Me would too. stop. I really wish he would. I I honestly wish he would stop. His best days are behind him, and I didn't see too much here particularly different from what he was doing at NXT. He's still slow as hell. Yeah. Still. We'll see. Um. Next up, we got Jay Lethal and Jeff Jarrett versus Sting and Darby Allen. This was a match that happened. Nothing really important really happened. The coolest spot was um, Darby jumping off the ladder and just sat in him, Sting's hands, arms. He caught him like a fucking like a child and just threw him on the ramp. That's that's probably the highlight of the match. Outside of the match, it was it was fine. It was it was a fun little stupid you know all over the arena match. You want to talk about Aimless? They had world <laughs> title aspirations for Darby Allen two years ago too. Bro, Darby has been sitting in Rampage Purgatory for like, the whole year with Sting. I just don't understand. Because there's obviously, there's an obvious connection with the crowd that Darby has. Yeah. And for some reason, they're just like, it's the same thing with FTR. I don't understand the reasoning for this, but like they just refuse to book them on the show. And, and I just don't get it. And you know how this is going to end. You've probably already booked the ending of the Sting and Darby thing. Darby's going to turn heel because that's the only thing that he knows how to do. Yeah. That's the only thing that Tony knows how to book is... Oh, somebody's got to turn heel. I think the only thing that is the only breakup that has actually seemed interesting to me, ironically, is the Swerve and Keith Lee thing, because it feels like they're going to be playing this out for a couple of weeks and it's actually going to be a character driven thing. But it's yeah. also something that I feel like Tony Holy is not writing himself. No, this this seemed like a kind of more of their thing. Yeah, which is fine. I think that's probably for the better. Yeah. Oh. Um, next up, we have Jamie Hayter versus Tony Storm for the interim women's championship. We might as well put everything together on this uh, for this one too. Uh, Tony Storm, Jamie, hold on. Oh, go, go ahead. Go, oh, you go, go ahead. In, in, in an interview right before Full Gear, she had her company man hat on. She was towing that. She was she was flying a flag, saluting niggas, dapping up Abaddon, dapping up all these niggas that ain't been seen on TV, dapping up Athena. I got y'all niggas. We about, to, we about to go in for the company, nigga. She said, you know what? I feel, you know what I mean? I'm on this shit right now. I feel like if Rosa can't do the shit, strip her of that shit. You know what I'm saying? Fuck this bitch for real. She said that. She that said that. She said, come up off that belt. I'm the champion. Motherfucker. She has this match. And she loses the match because you know what happens, Quan? Far too often, Tony does reactionary booking every single time. If you say you fuck with somebody and he sees enough people on the internet, he's just like Elon and Trump and all the niggas. He's on the internet all the time. He's all always the time. on Twitter. He's always on Twitter. All day, he's on Twitter. He said, damn, they really fucking with Jamie Hayter, huh? Well, I ain't had no plans, but fuck it. Let's just do it and see what happens. And he has her beat Tony Storm. Clean, well, not really clean. Not clean. Not clean at all. <laughs> but, 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 but clean Peter straight up. up. Yeah, but yeah, beauty, but but clean, but clean enough where it was like, okay, you're still a heel, so obviously you're not gonna win that clean, but you're gonna win enough so that Tony can actually say like, oh fuck, you didn't do it with Brit's help, you actually did it on your own, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So she gets beat here, on, on, and I saw some people say that they they like the Jamie Hayter Tony Storm match, the best on the on the card of, of the night. I thought it was good i thought maybe you know this show had the problem which i had a problem with like the old pwg shows where a lot of matches have a lot of near falls that don't need to be in the match and it yeah. kind of kills the momentum of it there's like yeah. three matches i can think of on this show where like okay we didn't need this many near falls the jamie i mean tony storm with damn near bianca out there um with these kick outs. it was <laughs> yeah. kicked out everything i was like okay this is unnecessary um yeah. but yeah i was besides that yeah it was a, it was a pretty good match um but yeah so Tony, Tony Storm loses the belt. And then so Dynamite tonight, we have Renee come out. She's talking about, well, yeah, Thunder Rosa just, uh, and Thunder Rosa and AEW came to the decision that she's going to relinquish the belt. So therefore, Jamie Hayter is now <laughs> AEW Women's Champion. And I said, huh? <laughs> now, how can you record? And, and the thing is, 
Tony, it's stupid as fuck. You could have did this a month ago. You should have did it a month ago. You should have did it a month ago. You saw this. You saw this woman at your scrum and all out talking about it. You've seen her. She hated the interim label. You know what else happened? And and no one's brought this up yet. And I think it's interesting. It's been said that Mox hated the interim label, right? Mox hated it so much. They booked a match. You want to lose it up. <laughs> where he won the actual belt and he lost the interim title. And he had yeah, the real yeah. title. So you mean to tell me you'll do that for, for the dude, but you wouldn't do it for Tony, who had been advocating for it for almost four or five months. Yeah. I find it real interesting that that's really the case. Yeah. I think he has a hard on for Jamie Hayter right now. That's his new prodigy. Britt, yeah, obviously, man. that's her homegirl. They're going to do the homegirl thing and they're going to work together. And Tony's going to, as we saw tonight, go to the back of the line. Your shit ain't even matter. I will say they did give give her the here nigga damn moment. They retroactively made her her interim championship reign a regular women's championship reign. But I'm not counting that. I, I, no, me personally, interim, I'm not counting that. It was when interim. you watch when you watch them shows years from now in this era, it, it ain't gonna ch- They not gonna update them graphics. <laughs> they not updating the no graphics for you, bro. But Quan, how do you, as Tony Storm, reconcile your time at AEW so far? I see so many people saying that it's actually a good run, and she's actually doing a lot. And I, I don't, I don't really, I can't really reconcile that. I, I don't think that like, okay, it's fair. She left WWE for AEW. That's what she wanted to do. But I can't reconcile that like she was doing, or she's in a whole lot of a better place booking wise than she's been anywhere else. They've had her on dark the last month. They had her working dark. Having title matches on dark. At the champion on dark. Equivalent of of winning the equivalent of winning the raw women's title and being on main event. Yeah. I don't see Bianca on main event. I don't see um, Roman on main event. Could you imagine could you could you imagine Bianca Ronda on main event? The uproar, my nigga, if that ever happened. That they would be calling women's groups. They would be calling everything. They would be yeah. doing everything for this shit. They would they would literally be justice for they had justice for Nash Carter last night. It'd be justice for Bianca Belair. I don't ever say justice for Tony Storm. <laughs> they had justice for Nash Carter last night? Oh yeah. I didn't watch it live, so I don't I don't <laughs> You know who popped that off? You know who popped that off? You feel me? Oh, you yeah. talking to him right now. You feel me? Oh my god. <laughs> but Not no, it's Nash Carter. This is this is this is dumb. This is this is dumb. It, it just really is dumb. I, I I think that I don't think anyone here looks good. I don't think yeah, Tony this looks good. I don't think Rosa looks good. I don't think Britt looks good. I don't think Jamie looks good. I think they all look shitty in this situation. Do you think they did this so that Jamie and Rosa don't have to wrestle each other? Because they would have they would have had to have wrestled each other. And clearly, uh, there's clearly yeah. some kind of <laughs> and clearly, issue you know, between the two. And Rosa's tweet is weird because it sounds like she quit ADW, but I don't think she did. But um, or she left AEW rather. But my my thing is this, right? Like, they would have had to have that match. You would have had to explain it. But it now it seems to me that Rosa's ready to come back, <laughs> right? Yeah. Like it seems to me that she's ready to come back. It so sounded showed- like it last week when she was it, talking. It, so exactly, if she shows up next week, you you're telling me there's still discord in that locker room. It was interesting because Wade Keller had a had a um, and I posted a lot of it in Discord when it came out. He had a he had an audio update, and he he taught he it was he was so glowing about the AEW locker room how it's 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 sunshine and rainbows back there right now now that Punk's gone, you know what I'm saying? He said he said it's not really as bad as people make it seem. Then he stopped and he said, "Well, the women's situation is still ongoing, but everything else is fine." This is like, <laughs> no, nigga. like no, that's actually a big deal because that like Quan like. A lot of what's wrapped up in that is your top women's, your top women's, um, uh, your top star, yeah, your yeah. top women are in that. So no, it's not all sunshine and rainbows because that that has a trickle down effect, and it happens, and, and it and it goes down to people like Athena who are stuck, to Jade who is stuck, to other people who could be doing better things, but because it's a log jam of these people, and now Tony is added to this toxicity, it's it's not good. Not good. I agree. Hopefully they figure this out, man. Um, come on, come on. I hate, I hate to hear the <laughs> Come on, <laughs> you know they're not. They're not. 
They're going to enable next. until they can't enable anymore and you get another punk situation. Next up, Swer- Swerve in Our Glory versus the Acclaimed um, for the AEW Tag Team Championship. If I were to rank these three, the three matches they've had, this one was probably the second best. I still think the first one was the best one. I think the uh, the one they had before that was the worst one. This is in between. I appreciate the storytelling. I appreciate Acclaimed getting a big win without any kind of help and just them winning. Um, obviously, uh, Swerve has been kind of leaning, not even leaning toward. He's straight up a heel at this point. He's, he's healing. Um, Keith is kind of was stuck in the middle. He he was kind of riding with Swerve, but not really. And then this is kind of the breaking point. He was like, "I'm not trying to cheat," and he walks out on Swerve. And they claim get the win. Um, and then we go on to Dynamite where <clears throat> Swerve and Keith are still having. They're trying to talk it out. So we'll see where they go from there. But um, yeah, the they claim gets. Puts the jacket on the on the camera and says, "Let's talk." Yeah. Cuts out. I, I thought it was cool. They need to be careful with this, Quan, because you run the risk of Keith Lee seeming uncool by handling this the way he's doing it. I think that to me right now, Swerve looks like the cooler of the two because yeah. that audience is that audience is very conditioned to think that what Swerve is doing is cool. So he's much more likely to be cheered or not really get the reaction that they hope they did if Keith comes off as a whiny, I don't want to do that, like type of baby face. He still needs to have an edge where it's like hard. I'm not doing this shit because I'm limitless. I don't got to do this shit. I'm cool. The walking off thing and the slapping and all that stuff, that, that was making it kind of seem like, all right, you're slapping. You're, like, that's not baby. That's not cool baby face. You know what I'm saying? So they need to be careful with that. They they got they got a Bret Hart him, yeah. That's what I'm saying. He he like like he could end up looking and seeming very uncool next yeah. to swear. He's not. He's already the one that that's not hanging around the rappers. He's not. You know what I'm saying? Doing all of the other stuff that Swerve is doing. Yeah. He's just coming off as a lame, <laughs> and most people don't like a lame nigga or a party pooper, and that's what he's coming off as. Yes, I agree. <clears throat> I'm with you on that. Um, main event. We have MJF versus John Moxley. Now, I think a lot of people who, who watch wrestling for a long time saw the swerve coming. Um, the, the finish is Moxley goes for the diamond ring. Regal comes out. He's like, no, don't use the diamond ring. Like MJF's like, I right, bet I won't use it. And then uh, Moxley gets the upper hand. Ref gets knocked out. Regal throws uh, MJF at the brass knuckles. Hits him with the brass knuckles. Salt of the earth. He went the championship. Uh, I think we all kind of saw it coming. Me personally, I think they should have just stuck with MJF becoming a face. I think the crowd wanted it. I think Moxley seemed to be okay with it. They kind of switched sides during the match. They kind of, you know, work with Moxley, the crowd and kind of. Moxley, Moxley even Moxley. seemed annoyed about. Yeah. But I feel like he thinks he know he knew what was going to happen on the dynamite before that. That promo before that. You talked about it last week. Was very strange, and it yeah. felt like he almost didn't want to fucking do it. <laughs> he let that boy go on vacation, man. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. He seemed, <laughs> he seemed like, on vacation. The weirdest part of that promo, and I watched, I watched last week's to get to this week's, was that he, they did the face to face, and he walked away. And I was like, wait, nigga, <laughs> the damn title card hadn't even. <laughs> came like my DVR was still running, and he was already up the rail. He's at the rail, <laughs> I gotta go, bro. <laughs> so tired of that shit <laughs> but it, they did the thing that i said would be stupid if they did it because they're AEW. naturally they did do the thing that was stupid and that was you work the fans up to make them baby face and then you you shit on them by or not even shit on them they loved it they loved because it they love everything the nigga does you should have doubled tripled down on the heel turn when he got back and I said this on the A show this week, and, and I want your thoughts on this too. I said, this actually makes the beatdown by the firm even worse because you have to explain why they would have gone that hard on him and why he would have allowed it. Because that's yeah. just not that's not in his nature to do that. He's not trying to get beat up. So now you got so now, so does he really hate the firm? Is he cool with them? Do, what are they gonna do? And you know why they can't answer that question? Because he wasn't on the fucking show this week, so it's another, it's it's another (laughs) week where they can't explain this shit. 
or if they even do. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't understand the dynamic what they were trying to go for with the firm thing. I, I feel like maybe at some point they were just like, we're gonna do this firm thing, and then MJF or somebody was just like, nah, you know what? This ain't really working. I don't think we need them to have them to be together, and then just kind of broke it off. I'm really, uh, I feel, I want to say like they were trying to go for like the Rock '98 type thing, where they were trying to, like, but they were just like really overthinking this, and it just didn't, it didn't hit the same. You know, the, you know the reason why the rock thing worked <clears throat> is because there was a really decent foil to, for him to go against. Yeah. It, the thing was, it wasn't like a <clears throat> will he, won't he type thing. And that's why that worked. It was, he, he was firmly against Vince. That was his foil. And it yeah. was like, we believe him because we hate Vince. Yeah. There was no on the other side, heel, heel or heel group that the fans were behind that they would conceivably believe that he could be a babyface against. The yeah. firm was a bunch of goobers who literally a week before, he did some Three Stooges shit to them niggas. Literally did the eyeball. The, <laughs> and sent them out the ring himself. So the fans are automatically like, damn, he's not only the greatest heel, but he's the greatest babyface too, my nigga. We got both. So yep. now you're already facing a dichotomy here where he's facing a beloved babyface, which they have not, you know, they're not wavering on. He's now a baby face and it's just two baby faces once again on the pay-per-view going against each other for the title, which they always yeah. do in AEW. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's unfortunate that MJF wasn't on the show this week. That would have helped. I guess he's filming um, the uh, the Von Eric movie. So well, he's on set. Well, Quan, why the fuck did you give him the title? <laughs> why did you give if I didn't think of that. And if that's the truth, why did you give him the title? What I'm if assuming it, what if, what he, if it was he still he still loses and then you start up you 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 start he, he's disgraced he's like I fucking still lost I followed the rules I did all the shit you told me to do regal I'm fucking out I leave and comes back and then he heals or they build it up yeah. why did you have to blow the load in full gear they want that moment is what you said you, what you said it was it was reactionary I, I think it was very reactionary on Tony Khan's part. I don't think they fully thought this out. In a one um, a moment, because like, here's my thing. Like, what was the biggest thing coming out of that, that pay-per-view? Did, did you feel as though it was his title win? It wasn't. I think, exactly. if anything, it was... Um, the Elite. Yeah, it was the Elite stuff. And, and that's the only thing people are talking about coming out of tonight's show is what they did. So once again, you've got the EVP world versus the Tony Khan world versus whatever the fuck the women is doing. And nothing is congealing right now and i feel like for someone who just look at the summer and now that we're in november we can look at what happened in the summer he left <clears throat> the last thing we saw of him for three months was a promo where he said fuck this company and the owners of mark he came back he he, he hoed tony to come back <laughs> had a weird moment it ate it all out fully returned and then all of this uh this punk shit this punk shit happened it's just, a, it's just a bunch of shit that's happening that just takes away these moments from these people. And it doesn't seem important and it doesn't seem special. He should have come out to Nyquan and held that fucking title up. How many fucking times has Roman won a, won a, won a, a match and didn't come out that Friday to talk his shit? Yeah, right? Zero. <laughs> Zero. Because what happens is people are going to tune in to see if he's going to show up tonight. They're going to see he's not on the show. And they're gonna tune the fuck out. They punted. They punted tonight's show. Let's just be I'm clear. Sure. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> I will say I did think it was. I thought this episode Dynamite tonight was actually wasn't that bad. I thought it was fine. I thought the last maybe like half hour was kind of like, all right, let's wrap this up. Um, but um, yeah, I, I agree. I think starting off the show, I, I'm very interested. To, I don't. We're not really the ratings type of people, but like, I'm very interested to see those quarterly ratings after you know the first segment with brian and all them and i just kind of see where it goes from there because it's going to be interesting because you're right they damn sure did put it like hey look we're gonna tell you right now you know here. The FA here tonight. <laughs> if you tuned in at 801 and he said that shit he says shit i got the turkey in the oven i'm out my nigga yeah Check you out <laughs> maybe they assume that too because it's the night before thanksgiving like you know people probably aren't really i wouldn't have, I then i want i want to put the elites return match on the show then yeah at, at the nine o'clock hour that's that's prime. Y'all stay on the shit. Stay on the channel because they they coming out. Yep. 
that's full gear, man. Um, far as the show goes, with a little bit of dynamite, with a little bit of dynamite. That's far as the show goes. It was it was cool. I thought it was um, I like I said, I didn't hate it. My my biggest complaint was I thought some of the matches were going too long. Too many near falls. It's, it's draining on an already twenty five hour long show. There were thirteen matches. We didn't get to the pre show matches with uh, like Jun Akiyama versus Eddie Kingston. Brian Cage, Ricky Starks, um, the Factory versus Best Friend, Rocky Romero, and Danhausen. Um, so yeah, it was it was, a, it was a long night. A lot of by the time we got to about um, shoot, I want to say the women's championship match. I was damn near tapped out, which you know, sucks because it was actually a pretty good match. Yeah. Um, as far as the rest of Dynamite goes, we can just kind of briefly go through some other stuff that happened. I'm trying to think of things that we didn't talk about we didn't talk about the um <clears throat> the oh, the orange cassidy match yo i'm just gonna say that right now uh jake hager versus orange cassidy why does jake <laughs> jake hager is still having a job there it's insane to me he's been there since day one too um this match was fine i guess it, it's jake hager <laughs> we go we've been watching the same jake hager match for about 15 years now watching the same <laughs> orange cassidy match for about as long we've been watching the same orange cassidy match too i, I Damn, think man. It was solid, <clears throat> uh, and I think I'll say this about a lot of the stuff, except maybe the women's tag match. I wasn't, I, I thought that wasn't actually very good, but um, I thought that um, Orange Cassidy's definitely got a look, definitely got a. I, I don't mind, the, I don't mind the backpack thing. I thought it was, it fit, it fits him. I think it's um, funny. The people are into, people are into this guy, yo. Like I'm, I'm not gonna take that away from people. They're, they're really into it to this guy. There's, there's some people on the show. I'm gonna be like, why are you into this person? But like, I can see why they're into this guy. Um, another title, um, another title defense for him tonight. The one thing about this belt is that it doesn't have a story, so it just kind of is there. It is and very much there. It, it's like a mid card belt, but it's like you already have a mid card belt, and you have another mid card belt. So it's like, is it the mid 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 card belt? Like, which mid card belt is this? I'm assuming this is like their European Championship. They don't need it. They don't. But I mean. <laughs> Is there? <laughs> yeah. I think. I think the plan. I, I, I. It seemed like the original plan was we're just going to defend this belt all like on indie shows and stuff like overseas or whatever. But then they decided to like switch it up and just make it like a show defended on TV every week because he defended that belt every week. Cause he's every week. I. Every I. Week. Would, I would say that if they have plans to go to, or well, they do have plans to go to to Europe, um, <clears throat> or the United Kingdom, um, next year, I would put it. They they're probably going to put it on a on a bigger talent. To push that next year, I would see. I could see that happen. I could see that. I could see that as well. Um, the match, the match itself is cool. Um, the after the match was probably more notable, more important. The lights go out. Well, first the factory come out. Um, they're asking for a match against Orange Cassidy, whatever. And then uh, QT Marshall's mic stops working. At first, I thought it was like um, some technical difficulties. Then the lights go out, and you, you know, House of Black pop up. We haven't seen. We've seen little vignettes for House of Black for the last month or so. And um, we finally see them. They all look to be healthy and in good shape. Um, Buddy Buddy Matthews looking massive. He, he's just like a um, a cool youth pastor. That little <laughs> shawl he had on. Um, yeah, they beat everybody's ass. And then Alice of Black and uh, Alistair just kind of like, "Yo, y'all, y'all with us? You with us, right? House yeah. of Black, we back, baby." <laughs> um, it's, hard, it's hard not to look at this with all of the things that swirled and surrounded him and be like, "Nigga, you don't want to be here. <laughs> Nigga, you got to be here." <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> um, I, I still I have, a, I have a friend of mine who's like who I like I told him like yo I'm pretty like he was gone man he was like no yeah. he wasn't gone I'm like bro you don't you don't write a three a three page letter to the fans on your personal Instagram account <laughs> if you're gone just just so you can leave for eight weeks like they don't that don't yeah. like he he did the bow okay yeah, he, did, he waved goodbye and said hey I'm out of here bro <laughs> exactly. That's it. <laughs> Not only that, I think I feel like the Alistair situation was kind of like, um, you know how, how niggas is like running out of, of a house party when the cops come? Yeah. yeah. So every, the door was open and niggas <laughs> was like, oh, we getting releases? All right, bet we out, we out, we out, we out, we out. <laughs> and the, the, the door shut and the cop was like, hold on, sir. How old are you? <laughs> His ass got caught in the crossfire, him and Buddy. Because they was both, Buddy was... I broke the chains again. I rebroke the chains. I'm not a slave no more. Like, yeah. we'll see how they book him here. But uh, title aspirations, huh? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I, I can't see it. I wouldn't be mad at them, you know, if anything, 
trio should. I don't think honestly. I think Malachi should be in the main event area, but he's it's such an interesting like his character direction. Do they want to put that kind of stuff in their main event scene? There's a real spooky, weird occult shit he got going on. It's it's almost like a Bray problem in the sense where like, do you want to include that in your in your 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 main title picture? They've stayed they, away they, from they, that. They, they, they can get kind of weird. Yeah, they have um, stayed away from the uh, the spooky stuff with the title. Um, I don't think that they that Tony knows how to book it particularly well. That's why, like, Cody was good at it because he got the he got the dustyisms in him. He he was he was he was good at doing that creepy weird shit. Yeah, Tony booking creepy weirdo shit. Yeah, you and Cyrus have fun with that because week <laughs> to week that's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be a mess. Um, I just hope they have some direction. I really do this time because it seemed like they were kind of aimless. At one point, it seemed like they were really into Brody King, and then they kind of just stopped. Gave him a title match over yeah, title uh, match. Malachi. Yeah. And you mean to tell me he didn't want to leave? <laughs> Come on now. Tell your we friend. Still we still ain't seen Andrade or uh, Miro. Uh, he just, uh, Tony Khan did speak on them saying they're just taking extended hiatuses, but they'll be back. Well, at least for Miro. I don't know about Andrade. Andrade put out some some vague messages, but I don't I don't care about what Andrade says. On don't want to. Listen, we got to say he's all team washed, wash out. He's a burnout. He's a burnout. He has one good year. One. I'm trying. I'm trying to think of a, a sports comparison. I'm trying to think. Like he's like RG three. Like, RG three. <laughs> Rudy Gay. Rudy Gay. Uh, <laughs> Rudy Gay. That's Connecticut. Uh, uh, yeah. He's, he's like all of them. <laughs> um, all right, let's see what else we got going on. Uh, trios match number two, we already discussed it. Jericho versus Tomohiro Ishii for the Ring of Honor World Championship. Now, Tomohiro Ishii, one of my favorite wrestlers in the world. <laughs> but even at this point, I'm over the chop fest. This match, the first 10 minutes of it, of the 15 minute match, was just chops <sighs> and more chops, maybe a clothesline. Then you get up oh, and there's chops. Or, or it'll be a clothesline when a nigga don't fall down. Yeah. So it's like this. So, so when they finally do a clothesline, you break the, you've break broken the immersion. Because it's like, what was different about this one than the other five times he came off the ropes and gave you one and you didn't fucking budge? Yeah. So we got that. Um, they go to commercial break. I go to the bathroom. I come back. It looks like Chris Jericho got stabbed in the chest at some point. He's bleeding everywhere. He cut I'm not even He definitely did. It, because I, I, I've i seen people get chopped pretty hard. I ain't never seen nobody get bleed that much getting chopped that hard. Um... And then the last five minutes of the match was actually very good. I thought it was a really good, you know, quote unquote, strong style type of match. Um, a lot of dropping on the head, a lot of heavy submissions and just like it was really, the last five minutes of that match was really good. And I wish they would have cut back on the chop. Fat. I know that's Ishii's thing, but I don't think they need to do it for as long as they did. Yeah, I thought no. like it was unnecessary. Like they were just kind of no. like dragging out, dragging out the kill time into the stop, last five minutes. Stop putting these foreign talent on the main events without story that too no chicago seemed to enjoy this if i were a random nigga who saw that mgf wasn't gonna be on the show and i tuned back in and i saw chris jericho fighting a nigga who looked like uh butterbean but like <laughs> four inches Smaller. shorter i would turn that shit right the fuck off stop doing that i don't understand why they do it why are you giving roh your main event slots by the way they stay doing that. I, I I think the inclusion of Ring of Honor has really, really hurt this show. It has hurt it since the summertime. Yes, it really has. And I, I wish they either they figure this out and give them some kind of show where they can do their own separate thing. But like, it really kind of is not like these are wish roster they have. People don't care, man. But, but Especially Quan, Rampage. But Quan, like, and that Rampage card looks stinky too. I was like, ooh, buddy. But um, but here's my thing: the shows weren't that much better even when our wish wasn't on it. So it's like you you either get a bunch of people you don't care about, or you'll get a you'll get a bunch of matches that were are good, functionally, that don't mean anything. Yeah. Like I, I feel like that tag match that that they had with the women. Just I'm sorry to go back in time here with uh, Jamie and and Britt versus like like who when did, when did they book this three way tag, and why is Britt and why are Britt and Jamie winning these matches? They're not are they are they making tag championships for them? I hope not. They need to start sowing the discord between them at this point. <laughs> Why are they winning well, matches? Like, well, I, I, believe, I believe Britt got the win, and she did cut off Jamie. And it, so I think they're, they're starting to plant the seeds, whatever they're going to do with Jamie and Britt. But this was just a match to have the women on the show. Um, yeah. We might as well just go to the quick hits of uh, 
uh, Dynamite. We'll see. We got um, Moxley confronts Regal. We kind of already talked about it. Brian defends him. So I liked it. I liked it. I liked it, it too. I liked, I liked it. it. I, I thought that <clears throat> I thought that Mox really sold the frustration. It did look like he was taking a shit when he was on the ropes. <laughs> I was like, all right, calm that shit down. Um, I, I but really more I liked it more for Brian and he brought up I don't know if I'm a really big fan of them bringing up the addiction stuff. And and like the or not, not the addiction stuff, but like Brian's dad or whatever. Like Yeah. The, um, um you know, you know, his dad was going through it and, and Regal helped him. I, I liked it, but I felt that it was start it was getting a little too hokey because it was like I reality works in wrestling sometimes, right? But I feel like when you, when when you're doing something that is like already an ill advised heel turn that you're trying to put over, I didn't feel like it hit that hard for me. Where it's just like, okay, that don't got nothing to do with what he did on Saturday. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like I liked him bringing up the problems and the issues Regal has physically. That to me was good enough. Where it was yeah. like, hey man, this guy, this guy can't fucking go. You gonna beat up this old ass nigga? That works. <laughs> But it also made you made you think like, okay, so now Regal can never get any comeuppance ever. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like that's what kind of that's what kind of killed it for me. Can Regal take a take a bump? He could probably take a bump, right? Like if he I had to. And I remember he had like that one more surgery right before he got fired, where he oh, was he? off NXT. He was off NXT TV for a really long time right before right, he got fired. That. He right. had that one last, and then when he came back. He didn't quite look right because he You're was right. still recovering. So I don't I don't really know if he can still take bumps anymore. So it's like I I agree I get them trying to say like listen, you will never see any retaliation for what you saw on Saturday, but I also kind of hate it because it's like, then why'd you do it? Yeah. It should have been MDF. I feel like the, the the crowd wasn't really super into it. And it like I, as uh, like when Brian was talking, it didn't seem like they were really interested in what he had to say. They were like, yo, fuck Regal. We want to see him get his ass kicked, and then, like you said, there might be a chance where we won't, we don't even get to see him get his ass kicked. So exactly, they're 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 doubly not giving a fuck about it and get him out the fucking yeah. room. It also <laughs> went on too. It also went on too long. I felt, I felt that the, the Moxie going back and forth, back and forth, the slap and shove fest between the two, all of that. And you know why else they didn't care about what Brian was saying? Because they've given us no reason to care about what Brian says. He just loses all the time. Yeah, he just he just there. <laughs> He's vibes. He's literally vibes the wrestler. That's literally all he does. <laughs> oh man. Speaking of uh, some vibes, uh Jade Cargill confronts Bow Wow at his concert. I, they played the footage. <clears throat> you know how I feel about this. And and I and I and I'll say it more plainly, more bla- more more plainly and succinctly on the show than I could on our Discord where I discuss it at length. When you when you get big time stars in your promotion, you want them to be big time stars or to be presented as big time stars. For one, it makes no sense that Jade, who's been largely ignoring this nigga this whole time, would show up to the Millennium Tour and try to start some beef. Yeah, that's that's the that's what I was gonna say. That's the, like why is she even there? <laughs> that makes no sense. It looks fake. It looks fake. The reason why the the Rick Ross shit was funny, but it was weird because why is he there? Who who called them? What did they did they ever they didn't even advertise Rick Ross? They didn't they didn't advertise Rick Ross at all. He just should Trina, they didn't advertise her. You're not treating these stars with the same respect that you should treat them. They should be on the show to promote something. If Bow Wow's on the show to promote the Millennium Tour, he should be he should be like, Hey, Millennium Tour is coming to Chicago on this day. That's why I'm here on the show tonight. I got a new TV yeah. show. Growing up, hip hop is going to be on Wii TV. No, you're just throwing stuff at the wall because you want to get a press hit. You want to get a press look. Sometimes it looks thirsty. So when when I worked in the entertainment industry, they would look at that as, as real kind of C tier, D tier type coverage, where you're yeah. gonna get, you're gonna say, oh, Bow is gonna show up. Shady Room will cover it. That's not considered an A tier publication. When you're getting posted on. Like TMZ is like A tier, but you can you can actually pay to have your stories put on TMZ, and they do that very often on WWE and on AW. They they basically feed them stories. A yeah. uh, tier publication is when you're on Good Morning America and they're like, "Oh, remember this? Oh, I'm going to talk about when you, when you when you beat up Bow Wow the other week." That's not what's happening here. Yeah. It has to it, the the actual star power has to reflect the way you're marketing it. You got to have a you got to have a plan in place for a Bow Wow or a Trina, and and I believe. Me and you had a conversation about a couple months ago where it was like, well, why can't Trina show up in Bridgeport or wherever the fuck she was? And I was like, because it has to make sense. 
If Trina is promoting a new show, or if you're going to be in her hometown, wait till you get to her hometown to blow that load and say, I'm the baddest bitch. People know me here. Yeah, people nobody, know you here. Nobody really knows me in New Jersey or wherever the fuck they were that week. They were at Grand Slam, so yeah, New York. Yeah, there was in New York. Hold off on that until you, you get to that point. So when it comes to the Bow Wow thing, we knew it was going to happen because once you once the bag is handed out, you start seeing the tweets more. The yeah, moment they, was, they put... They, they put the tweets on the show. So that's what I knew. Like, okay, they're obviously going to take this somewhere. Exactly. So it's like, I, I'm, I'll I'm, say this. There's people in the industry that are, they're not looking at this like AEW is the destination to go to if they want to have fun. They're not yeah. looking at it like that. They're looking at it like we can get a quick bag there and we can, we can, we can pass through and we can dip out, take some pictures. That's what they're looking at. Yeah. Probably. That's the uh, AEW coverage of the show for the, for the rest of the show. There was an NXT show on Tuesday. Let's get into it. Yes, sir. NXT 3.2.6. 2.5. What is this? The yellow and, yellow and white brand now? Gold and white? This, uh, this is white and gold. It's white all and types gold. of color. It's orange. It's some orange in there, too. Yo, they, they put the orange light on their ring so hard, bro. It looks like it's like they're glowing in the ring. It's kind of wild. And now Scripps, um, is orange. Scripps is orange. And I'm just like, damn, like everything is orange. And, and, and now <laughs> Dijak is orange. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, the crazy tip. All right, oh god, <laughs> do it. Um, Cora Jade wrestles Wendy Chu. Um, I think this is the best Cora Jade match I've seen in a, in a while. I thought this was um, she looked really comfortable out there. Yeah, she's getting better. Yeah. Which I didn't, I didn't think during the match that she had with um Roxanne on Halloween Havoc. I thought that one felt kind of like they were still kind of there. You know, me and Cyrus talk about with NXT guys and girls like they kind of. You still see the gears turning in their head. Like, what do we have to do now? Yeah, this yeah, was yeah. the first time I've seen Cora J. Like, okay, it looked like she was looked really comfortable out there. She knew what she was like. She knows her character. She knows what she wants to do. I think when having Wendy in there with her was good because Wendy's, you know, she'd be doing this for a long time at this point. Pro. Yeah, she's a pro, and she and she also sold really well. Um, yeah, you know what the change is, and the big changes with a lot of these people. And I'm seeing. I even saw it with Sol Ruka on yep. NXT. She was good. The loops. They're doing more loops. Yep. They're back outside. I've seen a lot of different Cora J matchups. I've seen Cora in a three way with Roxy. Oh, shit. I've seen Cora in a, in a three way <laughs> match. <laughs> Put me on slow mode. I saw Cora in a three way match with, I think it was Roxanne, Cora, and Mandy. And I said, okay, they're getting some really good reps in. They weren't doing that up yeah. until literally a couple months ago. So now you're starting to see where a lot of that potential is because when they're in that when they're in the pc they're practicing they look great when they get on tv it's different you know what i'm saying so like they're they're looking really really good i thought this match was, was really solid i'm real interested in seeing where wendy goes it looks like they they saw what she did on main event i thought it was so mean how people kind of treated wendy yeah that About was that. weird i don't understand that i was like okay main event isn't where they're going to say okay this is who you're going to be on the main roster they're going to see if you can work and they're going to and they're going to reassess what you did. They're going to see if you can see the fucking hard cam, and yeah, then they're going to go true. back and they they mostly use that for for game tape, and and they review that tape when they get back to the PC. So yeah, like, that, that, yeah they're trying to shit on uh, Wendy because like no one knew who she was. Like, of course, no one knows who she is. She's on a show where you know five hundred thousand people are watching every week. Like, of course, no, no one knows who. Six hundred. Six hundred. I'm sorry. Six hundred thousand people are watching every week. Of course, no one gonna know who the hell she is. Um, but she looked fine out there. The match was fine. She wrestled to me to regular old tv match it was cool she got her little spots in but yeah you got like it, i it's 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 i don't get involved in no no stay in twitter stuff like that but for some reason like they really like they hate her yeah it's really or just like there's certain women they just why. don't like it there's no real like reason or rhyme or reasons to why and then there's certain women they do like they're like oh they love this girl you know she's like fucking terrible but you know. i have no clue why they don't like <laughs> Wendy. It looks to me that from what they did see on main event, they might be going with a gimmick change for her, and she might actually be able to be herself. Yeah, um, it was interesting that you know they made an effort to point out that she was crying after the match and her damn eyelash hanging off of her face. I didn't like, the, I didn't like the crying shit. I never like when when baby faces like cry and stuff like that because it's like you make them look even weaker than than that. I I like the dejected look. I like the fuck, what the fuck do I do look. The crying yeah. to me was a bit much. I also. I my next note was like the ref ain't your hand slapped the coffee, my nigga. You didn't say all right, what you do? 
Yeah, I, he, he, I mean, he made a face. He was like, yo, what the fuck's going on? I like, I, he made a face, then continued to do the count. I'm like, there needs yeah. to be a type of rule here where, like, I turn, if like, like, Quan, if you turn around right now in your crib and, and you look at your kitchen and you turn around and there's a fucking puddle of water on, on the thing and a nigga laid out. Yeah. You're not thinking, all right, well, what happened? I need somebody to explain it to me before I move on and do anything in this yeah. in this place yeah. right now. I just thought that, like, I, I think that, like, they come up with so many weird ways. Because we're, like, on Raw, they did less interference finishes this week. But on NXT, they did, like, way more, like, really weird more. finishes. <laughs> yeah. Once once a week, there's a thing. There's a, there's a Shawn Michaels booking decision where I'm just like, yo, what, what you doing, man? What, like, what, what is this about? Um, this is this this was the one this week. You know what it reminded me of? You know, like remember like them early two thousands matches where like someone would get hit with a steel chair loud as hell behind the ref, and the ref yes. acts like he didn't do that shit. Like the whole or, arena heard that shit. Or even worse, the crowd. Oh, this, or they, like I'm just like I'm like I'm turning around. Like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. But yeah, that was so. We'll, I'm, I'm interested to see where they go with Winnie Chu. Maybe like a darker, maybe a little bit darker. I don't know what they're gonna do I, with it. My idea, they're not doing my idea. I always felt like they should have pit, put Wendy and Tiffany together as a tag team, like an unlikely mm. duo type tag team. Because okay. I think that character wise, personality wise, I really did like them together. I thought that it was a really good match together. Yep. Why not do the odd couple thing with them and and let them run some reps? And then you could you could babyface Tiffany for in, in a loss because she yep. lost that match. You could babyface her in the end process by saying, I got beat the fuck up. Maybe, you know, my dad says you're not as bad as I, you know, I'm saying I thought you were or whatever, whatever. So like, I, th- I always thought that, that would have been a really cool pairing. But, you know, Shawn Michaels be doing whatever the fuck you want to do. Whatever, whatever's going on. Speaking of repackages. <laughs> um, so I was not watching NXT live last night. I was watching basketball. Um, but I saw an image cross my screen on the, on the on Twitter <laughs> timeline. I said, hold on. What the hell going on over there? Um, we hit the de- debut of Scripps. Um, he has been calling in to WWE headquarters, leaving creepy messages for the last month or so. Um, graffiti on the walls and whatnot. We come to find out it's Reggie in a mask. Uh, <laughs> Is that Reggie? I, I believe so. I mean, I, I could no, be wrong. That's not Reggie. Could, I could that's, be wrong. That, come on, that's not Reggie. That's Scripps. That's not Reggie? That is Scripps. You're right. You that's know what Scripps. my ball is. Reggie, wherever that's, you're at, we uh, miss you, man. But um, exactly, that's not Reggie. That's Scripps. <laughs> Scripps is um, here. But, 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 but like, <laughs> I was watching it at West Coast Live, so later okay. than everybody else. <clears throat> and I'll say this: I did see that it was about his um, his Cirque du Soleil Cirque background. I, they dressed yeah. like that. I did see that. It, to be fair, this looks to be wholly his idea. This looks to be completely his thing. Yeah. There are certain gimmicks that you can only say no white man could ever think of this. No one could ever do no shit like this from the entrance all the way down. And they're letting him go. They're letting him go. I'll say the nice things first. Say the bad thing. I am glad he's finally able to wrestle. Yeah, me too. He I look good. He looks real good. He looks it's good. Cool. We need a black Rey Mysterio. We need a black, you know, that. I hate the look. I don't yeah. care if that's your background. I don't care. Either take the mask off or not make it look like whatever the fuck it looks like. It looked like he wearing a gumdrop on his head. So either I think if they can keep the mask, either they got they got to shorten the mask and not so long, or get rid of those stupid fucking tassels on the top of it. What one of those two have to go? This, also, this, he's trying to get this over, and I'm doing the the writing thing. Yeah, to, he almost was looking like he was he was he was he had some mental deficiencies because he kept doing it so much. <laughs> I said, "What exactly are you doing?" I, but my thing is, is like, my second bad thing is, you got Axiom, you got Scripps. Stop putting these good looking niggas in masks. These these are good yeah. looking niggas. Looks Stop nice. putting them in masks. Like reggie doesn't look bad i i know that the stigma comes with it i think that if you played this straight up and he came out with no mask and he said i'm scripts now people would have they would have did the reggie shit the first night they would have did the reggie shit the first night like they did tonight and they would have moved on now you're going to get it every single week until he shows his face 
probably right. Think um, about AK. Think about AK is that no one gives a fuck about AK. So no, no one, one gives a fuck about AK. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> people people would who the fuck is AK? They wouldn't even have made a difference. Um, yeah, the, the outfit itself, that's like 2005 Chikara bad. Like, it, it's pretty bad. Um, but you can always adjust it. I, I tweeted out, I'm going to let this play out. I As far as in-ring wise, he looked good. I think the, the two years he was on the main roster, he got a lot of experience in that. Yep. I think it showed. He looked like he looked really comfortable out there. He did some he cool acrobatic me. stuff. Well, am I wilding for saying this? He's such a natural talent that he reminds me a lot of Leo Rush in terms of just natural athletic ability. Yeah, and, absolutely. Or, and, and acrobatic ability. We're missing kind of like that look. I mean, we got Wesley, but he kind of plays a heavier style now. And he has to. Yeah, he's he a single to. person. He's not like the, he's not the, he's not the hot tag guy. Or he's not the, um, the face in peril anymore. So yeah. he has to play heavier. He's actually heavier too. Like if you look at a year ago, Wesley is bigger than he was last year. You, you know, you know the NXT, the NXT workout plan. <laughs> they don't fuck around up there. But I think you need a cruiserweight like Scripps. We need so a character like him, tweak it. And yeah, what we've seen in NXT is that they will tweak the character a little bit. So I'm, I'm yeah. waiting to see what you, but as the first week, I, w- I wasn't feeling it. Yeah. Um, next up, NXT Tag Team Championships. We have Chase U versus Pretty Deadly. Early in the show, people keep questioning Duke, Duke Hudson's, um, his, his allegiance to Chase yeah. U. Is, is, is yeah. his real deal or is he bullshitting? Um, and he's out to prove this time. He gets jumped by Pretty Deadly trying to defend the Chase U name. And we get a match later on tonight for the tag team championship. I really like this. I'm happy they finally found something for Duke Hudson to do. Right. Um, because for a long time he would just aimlessly just around being annoying, especially after the uh Dexter Loomis stuff. Well, it's they tough. Had nothing for him. It's tough. I mean, even before that, Quan, it's tough to get a guy over when you have him get beat, you have him get made to look like an idiot by Cameron Grimes week to week, and you had to yeah. shave your fucking head, and you lost the big match. You like, he yeah. lost every single step of the way with Cameron, and I I never understood that. I understood keeping Cameron strong, but I never understood like he like I feel like Cameron never had the adversity that he had with LA Knight against Duke Hudson. It just looked like it was just something to do for that nigga. But um, I like the the storyline that went throughout the, the the whole show. I thought yeah. that was that was really that was really well done. Where if you can't get it done in the in the in ring stuff, you can get it done in the storyline. I thought the tag match was kind of whatever. I, I feel like Pretty Deadly needs to, needs more meat. They need they need more. They need a better story. Like if you think about NXT tag title rivalries, you got some really banger ones. You know what I'm saying? You got some some of the best rivalries in wrestling history. Pretty yeah. Deadly don't have that foil yet, and I don't feel like the Creeds were that either. I just I feel like the Creeds and, and Pretty Deadly match wise were good, but like personality wise and feud wise, it was oil and water. I would never believed that like these guys would hate these guys to to a certain level. You know what I mean? You know what the problem is. I think kind of low key. I think pre deadly they're too big. Like literally, like they're physically too big for all the other tag teams. I think yes. they they need to just move up. I don't think they yeah. fit in this this current era of NXT. Yeah. They're too big. They're long. They're like fucking Randy Orton sized guys wrestling against yeah. like I mean, besides like um Briggs, who's like six seven for no reason. Everybody yeah, else is fit, and they beat him already. So like yeah. <laughs> everybody gonna be like like dwarfs to them. I feel like in their wrestling style isn't like super dominant. So it doesn't really fit. So it's kind of weird. So I understand where you're coming from. Like they don't really have a credible foil outside of Creed Brothers, which they've kind of already moved past that. So they beat them twice. Beat them twice. So where do we go from here with Pretty Deadly? I'm very interested. Either that, or they need some kind of like something else to their gimmick, or kind of just something something different for them. Because I feel like they're in a, they were in a weird spot too, where they don't really know what to do with Pretty Deadly. Yeah, yeah. Even something though they. Else. But 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 Sean, you could tell he loves them, and he loved them in UK too because he yeah, gave them. They're, they're running the same plays that here that they ran in UK. Um, but obviously they weren't the focal point of this match. It was the focal point was Duke Hudson. I like that. I like and, and credit to let's let's credit Vic and Booker here too, because they helped really sell this with Booker saying I don't know, like I don't really know if that was on purpose. And Vic saying, well, you yeah. know, be, like I love that Vic said Vic got to be the smartest commentator in the game right now because he said in the beginning I was all for it. Now I don't know, and I said that's the type of commentary that that really sells a storyline and really makes me say, let me take my TV off mute and see what they got to say. Are they feeling yeah. the same way about this creative? And the finish happens because Duke gives um, Andre a pump kick on accident and he gets raw and he gets he gets the um, spilled milk into the fin- into the finish. 
and I thought it was good. Week to week, if this plays out, I'm I'm pretty I'm fairly confident that Duke Hudson's not going to turn heel. But I think that this is this is going to look good because I do think the end game honestly might be that Andre Chase gets his first title in the company. I think so too. I think they're going to make them a tag team. I'm I'm all for it. Um, speaking of Booker T, he was on one tonight. This he was, was going. <laughs> I said that that first week was shaky, right? Yeah. I said I, by week three, I was like, oh, he knows the roster now. I was like, he's actually yeah. watching the show now. Like the first week, he didn't know who none of these niggas were. The, by week three, he he's he's all in on it, and and I love the excitement that he has for this show. And it's like, yo, if he gets a second win here, he said it on the on out of out of context this week with, with Ryan Satin. He said, <laughs> Wade Barrett, I'm keeping your seat. I think that really might be what happens. And he did honestly, ask. <laughs> like Wade and Pat and and Cole might actually be a really enjoyable three man booth. Like it, it really might be. Yeah. Um. But uh, where, where am I at? What else are we talking about here? What else happened on NXT? Who's we got a uh, okay. Um, Wesley versus Carmelo uh, in our main event. Gotta be, gotta be one of my favorite main events from NXT this year. I agree. This was a really good match. I really enjoyed this a lot. Um, I think Wesley and Carmelo have great chemistry, and they did it. They did it. On, they did it on this one, man. Just a little really yeah. good match. I thought the pacing was really good. I felt like they didn't go too crazy with the high flying stuff. You know, like it wasn't. They sold when they needed to. They stayed down when they needed to. I had that complaint with the AEW earlier today about there's like there's a spot in the match. I forgot what match it was, but like. Instead of letting a, letting a big move breathe, they got right back up to do another move that they didn't need yeah. to do. Yeah. I hated that. I think yeah. NXT has done a really good job of not doing that. They're letting their guy, they're letting the high flyers fly and do their thing, but they still know, okay, stay down, let the crowd get into it first. You don't need to jump yeah. in everything. I think it took Wesley a little while to get used to that, but I think he finally got adjusted to that as well. Carmelo, he kind of figured it out already. So I think this was a really good match. This was a good showing for Wesley to show, prove that yeah I'm I can do this single shit this wasn't a fluke I can do this and he, he looks, looks natural he looks natural kids got a he's a he's a good looking guy I'm glad they didn't stick a mask on him um but he looked really good I'm glad Melo's out of the picture thank you yeah thank some God. really good stuff some really good stuff here and um like the finish too the finish was really good and after the match we get the re-debut of die jack he's just die jack now he looks like uh, the Terminator, um, like Steven Seagal and like Terminator combined. Yes, bro. We've already talked about the tan earlier. As he looks like ninety seven, gen- looks like ninety seven genuine, bro. That's a light skinned Dominican man right Boy, there. Look crazy. That shit looks good. Is that is is is, is that what you've been learning <laughs> right now, brother? Is that what the fire was for? I I like this, but I do worry again. I I hate giving re-debuts title matches off the cuff yeah because he shouldn't be losing because he's got to he's got to improve his character Dijak's whole goal being on nxt for the next however long he's going to be on there is to get the stench of retribution off him yep that is that is his main goal and yes part of that happens to be getting a title but i really would have loved it being on braun and not wes because it's already kind of mm, like yeah it's already kind of like, all right, like, that's tough. You know what I mean? He just got the title. You know what I'm saying? So, I, I but the thing is, is that they've already did the the, the deck stacked against Braun stuff. And I, and we'll talk about that on the show, too. But um, yeah. I'm interested to see what they do here. I just don't want to see Wes lose that title so fast. And it, Sean's, a, Sean's, a, Sean's a little guy. You know what I mean? He knows how to book little guys versus big guys. So, I, I'll wait and see what he's going to do with these two. The mat- I'm sure the match would be great. Yeah, but um, <laughs> I'm with you. I don't like when people debut and automatically go for the title. Yeah, because then because you know, someone has to lose, and otherwise, you're gonna be, unless you're gonna give me a bullshit finish, which it looks like this yeah. is setting up to give us. <laughs> yeah, probably gonna give yeah. us a bullshit finish. Yeah. Um, quickly, we can go through the rest of this. Uh, Toxic Attraction opened the show. Um, basically talking shit. Kate and Katana come out. They're like, "Yo, y'all ain't shit," and then they get beat up. <laughs> um, I thought it was interesting that. There was no real opponent for Mandy. Like, nothing. There was, it didn't seem like it, at least. Um, it doesn't seem like she's going to have a match on the pay-per-view. On de- that's where I'm at. I'm like, it didn't seem like she's going to have a match for Deadline. Um, or or it's going to be Nikita. But Nikita already got something going on. Well, yeah. Well, 
they do have the, the sixth woman and I'm pretty sure it's always going to interrupt that. So you're right. I don't know. Okay. I, they're, they're putting all their chips in Iron Survivor. Um, I could make a guess on the women's side who could be in it. I really don't think Nikita is going to be in it, which is going to be strange because I think she should be. I'm, 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 I might be in the minority. I think she's really improved. I think she's really looked good out there. Yeah, I, I, I haven't had any problems with Nikita. Uh, I know people are kind of like on and off her, but on and off about her, you know, due to outside stuff that doesn't have anything to do with the show. But yeah, I mean, that, that doesn't matter to me. Yeah. Um, I do think she had momentum when she was first around. That injury really kind of killed it. I think she's starting to get it back, get her bearings back in order. Like you said, with the house show stuff, I think she does look much more comfortable out there. Mm-hmm. I think her working with Zoe is probably going to be good. Zoe's a vet. She knows what she's doing out there, so she'd be good. Um, but yeah, uh, they're gonna have a six woman tag next week. It's gonna be Toxic Attraction versus Kaden, Katana, and Nikita. I'm sure Zoe Stark will get involved. Speaking of uh, Zoe Stark, <laughs> excuse me, she wrestled uh, Sol Ruka. And actually, you know what? I think Sol Ruka looked pretty good out there. This is only, I believe, her third TV third. match. It's her third TV match. And she looked and, pretty comfortable out there. And again, it's the loops and it's who they're working with. I, I, yeah. I, I seem to think that in NXT, like, there was a tweet that came out. It was like, oh, well, this show had this many women on it. They Raw only had this many and NXT had this many. I'm like, because half of the people on NXT, I hate to say it, are not going to make it to, to Raw and SmackDown. Only the best of the best make it on that show. Yeah, that's just that's point. just period. That's just period. Look at the War Games match. It's, it's a bunch of vets and, and chosen ones, essentially. It and, should be. And, and, and Ridge somehow. Ridge snuck in there. I don't know how, but he got in there. <laughs> Rich is good. He's good now, he's man. Fine. He's fine. He's good. I um, but I think with Saul, it, it there's something there. I thought her promo, like the TikTok thing, was was kind of good. I don't know yeah. about I don't know about WWE making niggas make a TikTok just to put storyline shit on there. I just think it's just crazy for the algorithm. But um, because who's gonna see that over the 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 booty vids? But <laughs> I think Zoe's talented. Listen, the problem with, for me with Zoe has never been her in ring. It has always, always, always been her character. And I don't and I, and I don't like she didn't, she didn't have one for a long time. So I'm yeah. happy we finally got something going. I'm not sure what or where it's going to go from here, but I'm interested. She, she yeah. finally got my interest for, for the first time in three years. Yeah, but yeah, it was it was solid. I mean, again, another TV match. I, I, I one thing I love about this this NXT is it really is developmental from the top to the bottom. You will get the vets going at it, but you're also going to get some people who need reps on TV and Saul desperately needs reps on TV. A lot more than like Lash Legend does. I think that she's accelerated much faster than Lash has, and that's why Lash is not on TV and solid. That's why Lash not. This, you know what Lash needs? She needs NXT UK back. NXT UK was perfect <laughs> for Lash. That shit was working over there. I don't know. I don't know why. Or I don't know if it's the way they format their matches over there. She looked so much more comfortable on that show than she obviously is taped. Yeah, exactly. So I was she, gonna say you also know it's edited. Right? <laughs> yeah, it's edited. So it's that too. But um, I don't know. She's a lot more comfortable when she's on UK. Same with the uh, Von Wagner, but. Oh, we might well get the other women's match out the way. We had uh, Kiana James versus Ivy Nile. I feel like we got to start getting Ivy Nile wrestling with the big girls now. I think she's proven to, at this point that she can go put it with the with the big girls. I very strange how I mean, the match was fine, but yeah, match was fine. very strange. Um, what what was she mad about? Did you catch Who? that? Who? Um, Ivy when Julius was talking, what was she mad about? I feel like some inside joke thing or something. I don't know what that was about. He was like, he started like going off about like other people. He was like, she's like, what are you talking about? Like, chill. I don't know what that was about. That was really weird. It was, it was weird. I, I know it's, it's probably not a shoot, but it, it was like, cause she stops him again. And that's yeah. when Bruda starts talking. Yeah. I was, I was like, what? I was like, listen, if you're going to break them up, just have a, have a segment where they say, you know what? I think we've done everything we needed to do here. Let's, let's hand over the keys and let's just go our own way. Yeah. Don't do this weird kind of stuff. Like, if you don't want Ivy now to be on there no more, give her a theme, give her a new look, and just go with it. I don't think Diamond Mine needs to break up. You already soft broke them up anyway. Yeah, we haven't they're seen already, Ryder Shrog in months. You know what I mean? Yeah, they're, they're already soft broken up. Don't do another breakup angle here. You already came out of one. I just yeah, thought I it was agree. weird. But I agree with you. I think Ivy needs to start rolling with some of the big dogs. I think she's ready. She's another, I think, um, proponent of the developmental system that I think has really worked for it, and it's really worked out for them. I, yeah. Her and Casey on the show more or more often now. Um, Soul's going to get there. And, um, and Kiana, 
Kiana James looks all right too. She didn't look, I mean, she looked a, little, a lot more comfortable out there too. I still think her gimmick kind of, I'm, I'm not fully in on it yet, but Booker, I mean, as far Booker as Booker is into that gimmick. Booker is into that gimmick. <laughs> Booker is way too into that gimmick. Booker is that. way too into it. Uh, man, absolutely one of his fave vibes. Um, Apollo Crew was announced for Braun's deadline opponent. We kind of figured that when he beat JD. I, I guess it'll be fine. It'll be cool. I don't, it's just a match for Braun, I guess. Listen, um, Braun went- right now, and this, is, this is a show, to me, you don't ever see NXT in such a kind of holding pattern with champions for this long. And this is a show to me that can never truly evolve until they actually let Braun and Mandy go right now. Because what we're seeing right now in a lot of the people who are kind of running in place on this show that we've been talking about is because you have these champions that have been an albatross to that to that title division. I'm not saying Apollo should win it. I absolutely think it's the worst place you can go. <laughs> but, but what you're doing right now is I think you're really cutting off the legs because Braun has no real storyline. He's beat all the UK niggas. Mandy beat all the UK niggas, and they don't have anything anywhere else to go. And now you're going to make us wait for Iron Survivor, and then another fucking pay-per-view, which I'm pretty sure n- neither of them are going to lose the titles, because they're going to have another pay-per-view in January, per- yeah, probably. And then you're going to make us wait till April. I think that's way too long. Like, that's crazy. That's crazy. Because he, he won it in April. So, yeah, it'll be a whole year, which is, you know, wild. It's, um. it's crazy to me. Yeah, it's, they're in a weird spot with Braun right now. I mean, they had him fishing on this episode. I said, show. I said, what kind of a man? What kind of a man holds a rod? What kind what's, of man is fishing, bro? What's the last time you gone fishing? Shit, man. I'm as a man, never. As a child, <laughs> as a child, maybe I was like six, seven. But yeah, I was like, listen, same. you you can't make him more. Listen, I don't want to know about Braun's home life. All right, <laughs> let's just be clear. I don't care. I don't know about that shit. I don't care about it. I want I want him to yell and beat people up. That's I know. I want, Breaker. I, want him to, I want to hear him say, if you're scared, get a dog. I, like, I want to hear him say that. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to hear one liners. <laughs> um, last thing before we get out of here, because it's getting late. Um, Schism said, no new friends. They said, look, we ain't inclusive no more. Y'all had the chance. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all had the chance. It's too late now. Um, that niggas, <laughs> go to the door. You out of here. <laughs> you're done. <laughs> Um, yeah, this was a, a, a cool little, fun little segment, I guess. Uh, I thought it was really hilarious watching the crowd just chant sacrifice. They're like, sacrifice. I thought that was really, really funny. I thought, um, what's her name? Ava Rain pulling the fan out the, the, the fan out the crowd and then like gave her the hug and gave like the menacing smile to the camera. I thought yeah. that was a really good shot. And I was going to make that, the, I was going to make that the cover for the, uh, for the episode today, but I couldn't find a good picture on WWE.com because I thought that was a, like a, a, the best shot. Or just staring at like just that, that Michael Jackson thriller smile at the camera, like, yeah, I got this nigga. She's a natural. Um, she, yeah, she, she's, she's, she's good. She's a natural. And by proxy, which, which makes sense, which makes sense, you know, with exactly. Her dad, it, 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 it makes sense. By proxy, she is getting over an act that was ice cold a month ago. Ice fucking cold. Ice could, cold. Me and month. Cyrus talked about every day, every week. Man, I do not care about schism. I don't care about Joe Gacy whatsoever. This is not interesting. He almost uh, he damn near he damn near ruined Braun's title reign. Yes, the single handedly. I, I am into this shit very much. This is very much very cool. I've always kind of liked Joe Gacy or Kevin Jones as I call him, <laughs> and I think that Ava is a lot to do with it. But a lot of it is them saying, "Okay," they throw their hands up and said, "Okay, we hear y'all." The other shit ain't working. Yeah. Let's give them a new look. Let's give them something that fits them, and let's make it look cool. Like I, I've even come around on 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 G uh, on um, the diet. You know what I mean? Like, I think that why would you take away the one thing that these two guys are good at doing, and that's cutting promos? You know Especially what I'm saying? Like, I don't understand why they had Gibson stop talking like that. Yeah, exactly. He's really good at getting this shit across, and it works. And I'm interested in seeing who they go after because, like, Quan, there are not that many trios on this on this yeah. roster and i could see chase you but they've done it pretty deadly you'd have to baby face them pretty hard but i could could that be the foil for them that could be could i that, think i think pretty deadly would get over very well as a baby face team on that i think they have they have the funny catchphrases yeah i i mean they don't you don't you don't necessarily have they, they can work a style where they're just straight up baby face style they, they don't need to cheat because like i said they're so big anyway like you yeah. don't even need to cheat 
they could work if they want to go that route. And then but, they, look, that could... but look what they're working with. They're working with GYV. With GYV, if it's essentially, so the matches are still going to be good. Yeah, they're going to be amazing. Gotta, they just got to get <laughs> yeah. the they just got to get the characters yeah. over. Yeah, for sure. So I, I'm interested in that. But with Gacy, it's like with him, it's like West. The West thing is so tough because everybody he's going to be facing right now is bigger than him. <laughs> Yeah. But I see that happening with him too, or ugh, or Melo. Ugh. But anyway, I see I see Gacy and Iron Survivor. To be honest with you, that'd be cool. I'm with I that Survivor. He beat he beat um he basically sent Cameron out the character the territory. I don't I don't think I don't think Cameron's ever coming back. I think he's done. I hope so. He can go. Yeah. What What do you feel about the the Ela Don um stuff before we get there? I didn't see it. They did. They, they, I, they, they showed, they showed a quick promo, video. but I didn't, I didn't really. I didn't catch it because I was like working at the same time. So I kind of oh. missed that one. Oh, she had a she had a vignette and um, she cut a promo talking about Alba is not over yet, and you know we just begun and stuff like that. And I thought it was solid. I, I think that again, we got one too many spooky niggas on this show. I think we hit our limit with Schism. They they kind of Schism fills up the bar to about a ninety five, <laughs> and having Ilya, Ilya Don be a witch on there puts you at about 115 percent like you need to yeah they they, they you got to tone her down yeah i agree um they they well as long as isla dawn not like nxt uk dial dawn the nxt uk get that like dawn she was damn near undertaker in the uk <laughs> so <laughs> um as long as they don't go that far i think we should be all right because i feel like schisms really cut back on their supernatural spooky shit now they're just they're back to their original just cult which yeah. is fine keep keep them there Love um, yeah, I love a good cult in wrestling. Every, there's always always room for a cult. That's it, man. Um, it, first of all, I want to say thank you for you know doing this with me. You know, right before Thanksgiving, I know you got stuff to do. You got got to cook. I saw, like I said, I saw you. You know, posting videos on on your Instagram. Yeah, um, man, it's, it's nothing. Not, you know, anytime. It's, it's I, nothing. I, I always want to do this show. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I always want to do the show because because Mills don't watch these two shows. So like, yeah. I, I, you know what I'm saying? I, I always watch. You know, I watch NXT every week. So like, I always want to talk NXT. I always want to want to talk about that stuff. But I'm just glad my voice held up. Yeah, better, I appreciate that. Did, better than it did on the black print. My voice actually held up. Um, and, and I'm glad I was able to do this. So you know, no problem. Anytime you need me, just call me. I'm right here. Appreciate it, man. Appreciate it. Um, please, everybody, tap in. Patreon, y'all know the drill by now. Please tap into Patreon. Discord is going crazy right now. It's a really fun community. We all love each other so much. Um, I don't. What shows? <laughs> just <don't. laughs> uh, What shows we got going on? Spot calls. Y'all, y'all haven't done a spot. Well, Cyrus we're gonna, gonna make, uh, we're gonna, we're, Me and Cyrus are doing something very cool. Um, very soon, you guys are gonna see it. Awesome. We're gonna give an update on spot callers. It's not going away, but obviously. Some you know, sorry, I had to take a leave, so we can't really record right now. But um, we did promise an episode. We promised a couple episodes, but you're gonna get an episode this month, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna talk about our roadmap for 2023. So be, awesome, be, be, be. awesome. Um, tap into a show. They had a great discussion about um, well, shit. They talked about full gear on a show. If you ever heard it already, they had a little, another in depth discussion. I oh. talked to it again just for you. <laughs> just, just I really appreciate. It. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'll, I'll absolutely tap in the draft diaries. I was on the last episode before they took the break. Uh, we talked about Real World Vegas, which is my favorite, which is like one of my favorite TV shows of all time. Favorite seasons of a reality show. I like to see Scare alone. Classic like season. Scare. <laughs> uh, we, we, you know, Craig, we, there was so much stuff we didn't even get into. Like, we didn't get to talk about um, Irulan gambling addiction. Or one of the <laughs> one of the girls had a gambling addiction at one point. They were escorts. At, they were escorts for some old guy at one point during an episode. Um, it was uh, this like if y'all never seen Real World Vegas, please go out of your way to watch it. It's some of that the best. Was, that was the season where MTV said, "Okay, we need to get standards and practices down there all the time," because that was the one season they were they wilded it out too much for MTV. They were, they were wilding out yeah. the holes day one. Uh, mm-hmm. They had a day, threesome in the bathroom. It was nuts. Um, also, you know, we also we also discussed Billy and Chuck's wedding, which is really really funny. Like watching it back. It was also my uh, 11th birthday or 12th birthday, so which I thought was uh, it all it all worked out. Um, <laughs> did I miss anything? Tap in the Black Print Black Print podcast. What y'all days gotta, it come out? Promote y'all don't gotta promote. That's, all right, that's fine. We're already here. We're already here. Black tap in the Black Print. Tap in them on Amp on Amp Radio every Wednesday 9 p.m. Eastern. Uh, shoot. 
I don't that, know. Yeah, That's yeah. everything, man. Guys, happy Thanksgiving. Y'all are probably going to hear this afterwards, but happy Thanksgiving. I'm thankful for everybody who listens to the show. So with Justin, so with Niels, I can speak for Cyrus. He's, I'm sure he's thankful for something. Um, and <laughs> hey, yeah, I just want to say thank you guys for listening and um, catch you next week. All right.